Welcome back to Macro Dosing, the only podcast that you can find available on iTunes and Spotify. All the other podcasts, they just don't exist on all those platforms. So we're the only ones. Thank you for listening. Um, the show is brought to you again by DatChat. Now, DatChat is a service that we love. It's an app that we actually use. So we'll be on DatChat tomorrow. We'll, we'll have office hours in DatChat this week. We'll be uh, interacting with the posts jumping in there, maybe showing some pictures behind the scenes on macrodosing, answering your questions. We've had some good questions on there. I know that Big T has gotten into it with some of the commenters on there, but that's that's what that chat's for. That chat has an awesome new social networking and messaging app. A bunch of us here at Barstool are using it. It gives you the ultimate level of privacy. So you can message and share with people that you know the way that you normally do. You can send a bunch of drunk texts that you regret because they can all self-destruct and you can pretend like it's never happened. If you're sending private pictures, that chat's great because there's no screenshotting allowed. It's perfect if you're going to be planning something with your girlfriends or guy friends, bachelorette or bachelor party plans. No screenshotting, so it's safe. We're about to get into engagement season starting this week, going through the, uh, through the Christmas holidays. If you're planning a bachelor party or a bachelorette party, you should be using that chat to do that because nobody can screenshot it. There's no evidence that somebody can hold against you later. So that chat, use it again. Join the macro dosing group on that chat. I think we're one of the top like two or three groups on that chat right now. So join up with us and uh, we'll get into some stuff on the show. You can ask us questions, start new topics on there. We'll be hopping in, hopping out. We love that chat. I know Arian likes to sip a little bit of the sheesh and get involved on that chat. And fire back at some people that are on there. So um, check it out. Download Dat Chat for iPhone and Android in the app stores right now. Or go to datchat.com slash barstool. You can get more info and download Dat Chat today. So let's just jump into the Tennessee Minute because we've got Tyler and Hinden joining us right off the top. Today's episode is going to be about JFK, by the way. So uh, we're going to get into that after we do the Tennessee Minute. Here's Tyler and Hinden. All right. We welcome back our favorite guests on this show. There were only recurring guests on this show. Um, we got we got Hinn and Tyler here from the University of Tennessee, the Volunteers, bowl eligible. We're going bowling, boys. Clap it up for the guys. Can't wait. Can't wait. Always a great experience to go out there. Yeah. Thank you. So we're off a big win, sixty to fourteen against South Alabama. Right off the bat, need to ask you, was that an Arian Foster bow? That you pulled yeah. off. Yo, it hold was on. A remix. I just sent I just sent a video to the Macrodose Instagram. Look at yes, it. Sir. Okay, we'll pull so it up. Pull up. Remix it a little bit. What's, Still paying though. What's the remix? Explain to me the the process of remixing. You gotta, you gotta, yeah, like, you, you, gotta, gotta, you, you gotta see it. You want me to send it to I can DM it to all of y'all. All right, Mad Dogs, Mad Dogs got it. Okay, got we're, it. we're about to take a look at it, but congratulations, guys. Big win. Um there you go. Very proud of you. And now you got Vandy coming up this week. Vandy is, uh, I think you guys are like 31-point favorites against Vanderbilt. So Jeez. just take we care of business. We don't overlook anybody, though. We don't overlook <laughs> anybody. But <clears throat> never. we do We we do want to kick ass. We do want to kick that, ass. Are we prepared the same for every team that I have yeah, yeah, for real. No, for there real. Is it. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> literally, no, no, for real. We literally, 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 I ain't never, we literally like, prepare the same ever, way. No matter who we play. Every team I ever been on, like, always the sorry teams. You don't really, like, much study much on them. Enough. But these folks are dead ass will study just hard for this game. They was done with that shit weird. They don't. I'm being for real. No, bro. for real. I am, too. I am too. I'm, te I'm telling you, though. I'm telling you, though. I'm telling you what happens. Don't. They listen. might They might. They might give you the cue cards and the. It was presented the, to us the same. That's what I'll say. Exactly. It's presented to you the same. They spent like, a little, they like spend like a little more time on Georgia. I promise you. I promise you. They probably, yeah. they probably they did. Yeah, like on the, on the front end for sure. Yeah, on the front yeah, end for yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Don't listen to Aaron. Aaron's feeding you rat poison right now. That's You don't, <laughs> you don't take any of that in. You, you <laughs> live by your maxims or whatever the hell Big T always brings up. General Neyland's maxims. <laughs> General yeah. Neyland's maxims, yeah. Uh, so we, we haven't had you guys on in a couple weeks. Great first quarter against Georgia. Mm -hmm. Great first quarter. I was. We were all watching. We were in the in the group chat. Very uh, very happy with how things were going. Obviously, they're just like they're they're a fucking wagon. Georgia, they're like their defense is is insane. Did you feel like you were in it though after that first quarter? Because it, you looked like you were playing confident, Hendon. Yeah, I blew it. I played terrible. I just didn't like. I didn't deliver that day. <clears throat> it was bad. But now nah, we definitely should have. 
we because we had everything clicking. It was me. I was blowing it. I, I think can't, I got better than that. You're being a little too hard on yourself. I think. No, I'm like, well, uh, telling this all the time, bro. No, I was being real with myself. I thought you were telling, like you were like, yeah, I told him it was his fault. I told him right to his face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, like, no, he be a real one. He like, man, you play bad today, man. How how big? Because what do they list? Big T. What do they list Jordan Davis at? Like they list him at like six five, like three thirty. How big is that? Dude? I believe he's six six three forty on the the depth he's chart. He's the biggest human being I've ever seen. These three. Yeah, seven. like he's too large of a human being. Like he's like six eight, like four ten. Did you see? I saw a video of him <laughs> chasing. I think it was whoever they played last week. But there he was chasing a dude. And he's fast. Like I think he runs a four eight. Hey, hey, Basil and Arian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga he deserved to be the number one overall pick. How you run? A, how you know he runs a four eight and he that's, ain't run a forty eight? That's just what I read. I'm not. Don't quote uh, me on that. Let me find this. Oh, I ain't gonna lie. He was fast, but four eight. That's od. Four eight. That's that's almost the same. But I think Big T just like he knows fans that show up at practice and they like stand four hundred yards away with binoculars and a stopwatch. Just like timing people. <laughs> and then they run to the message boards and yep. list. Let, let me send you guys this video. It's This is terrifying. Uh, can we pull up the video of the bow? Can we watch that? I'd like to take a look and so we can we can check out the remix of the bow here. Yes, I see. Okay. Hey, Maddie, do you got my email? My sh- oh, my daughter. Oh, okay, and there's here no telling where that shit is right now. Don't tell me your email like live right now. <laughs> Just is your uh, text not working? Well, she has it. Oh, oh, I know what you're. I have your. Email. Don't. Okay, baby, baby. Yeah. He was gonna say that email. That would have been OD. Oh God, I don't care. Okay, I like it. I like it. That's that's a good handshake. Yeah, you mess with it. I love it. Yeah, that's perfect. I was saying, hold on. She, she about to email me. Hold on. Um, Hendon, mm-hmm. I was actually going to ask you as a transfer. I, I was talking to a guy that got traded from the Nationals to the Dodgers this year, and it seems to me like one of the big issues of of switching a team is, especially if it's like a college football team with all these players, or a baseball team which has a ridiculous amount of guys on the roster, is learning mm-hmm. all the new handshakes for your new teammates. How long mm-hmm. did that take you, or did you have to like create a new handshake with every person that you met? Yeah, pretty much had to create a new handshake with everyone I met. How does that go? Is it just like based off your vibe with the guy, or do you have like like somebody they might make it up and be like, "Man, I want to do the shake with you." Like, all right, cool. Or uh, you ever have somebody like, "Hey, yo, let's do the shake," and you like, "Mm -mm." yeah, for sure, definitely hit it. Not Not feeling, not feeling it. Yeah. Are you ever definitely. accidentally like try to do the wrong handshake with somebody and then you fuck it up? I definitely have. I have. I've done a lot of wrong shakes with the wrong guys. Yeah, I feel like if you just, if you're confident enough, you can pull it off. You can make them think that they're wrong halfway through. Like, no, I'm doing it right. Uh, they know, they know. They'll be like, what you doing, bro? I'm like, oh, I'm uh, Big T, do you have any questions for them about their, uh, he was projecting which bowl game you might be going to. Actually. Well, we were just having some discussion. We were talking Nashville, Charlotte, Jacksonville. Here's my goal, because I know we talked, and y'all said we'd all go to the bowl game if we beat Georgia, and that didn't happen. What I'm hoping is the Gator Bowl gets real infatuated with Tennessee fans coming down, spending a lot of money. If we go to the beach, who's in? Who wants to go to Jacksonville, New Year's? When would it, when would it be New Year's? Well, I, it's not New Year's Day. It's like, uh, I think it, it may be New Year's Eve or the day before that. Can we expense it? I might be I might be deep off of some cheeks New Year's Eve, dog. <laughs> Hang on, let me. A couple Dude. years ago it was it was a few days after. Let me see. You're gonna you're gonna sell me on somewhere nicer than Jacksonville. <laughs> right. about, oh, well, I thought the beach might entice you. What about Nashville? Great city. Oh, uh, that's it. <laughs> that's home. But I'm damn sure. It's not like a it's like a pilling for out of towners. Like Nashville's cool if you like Tennessee. Nashville's like, cool if you don't know that. Like if you ain't from Nashville. Okay. Yeah, if, if you're going on like a bachelorette party, like Nashville's where it's at. It yeah. is, uh, the Gator Bowl is New Year's Eve at 11 a.m. Listen, that sounds like a great time to me. Great rest of our day. Yeah, that was straight, man. Um, yeah, really happy for y'all niggas, though, man. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> 11 a.m. is, that's, that's too early for football. 
I don't know how they do it on the West Coast when you know you wake up and it's like 10 a.m. Football's already starting. I like a nice afternoon kickoff, maybe an evening one. But yeah, if, if it comes down to Nashville, Jacksonville, or Charlotte, if you had to pick one of those three, which city would you rather go to? Charlotte or Jacksonville? Probably. Yeah, Charlotte or Jacksonville, for sure. Jacksonville, probably yeah. yeah over Charlotte. Yeah, I feel I feel like Jacksonville, given the the choice among those three. That's mm-hmm. it's Florida. Like, yeah, I definitely would want to go to Florida because I stayed in Charlotte the whole quarantine. So I'm not trying to go back to Charlotte right now. Yeah. That's pretty, um, are you a uh, are you a Panthers fan? Nah, not a Panthers fan. Who'd you grow up rooting for? No one. Really, I just like different players on different teams. Are you saying this because like the drafts in your future and it's like no, way this is forever this has forever been my this has forever been my like I've never liked any teams so whoever I get drafted to be my favorite team for real no they won't was that <laughs> was I that promise a, they won't was that a 2022 NFL draft declaration on macro no. no don't start that <laughs> Trust me, I don't want I don't want that. Arian, I don't want that. Arian's the one that wants you to go. I want you to come back, but No, don't come back. Would have been great to have that on the show. Don't come back. Uh, if and when you do decide, can we have that exclusive? Uh yeah, yeah. Don't just 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 don't come back. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> ain't none ain't none for you left in Max, but dog. <laughs> I would love to see you as a member of the Washington football team, personally. I think that would be a good fit because you play quarterback, and I think we need a quarterback. So, that's what's <laughs> match made in heaven. You don't mess with Heineke? No, I love Heineke, actually. So, I, I'm, I go back and forth with Heineke. I think it's a little bit unfair to him because he was an undrafted guy. He didn't get a shake for, you know, four years, really, five years until somebody yeah. gave him an opportunity. And so, he has – a lot of that, like, young guy, he makes a lot of mistakes, but he also has a lot of playmaking ability where he can be super exciting to watch. But he gets judged based on being an undrafted guy. So when he makes a mistake, everybody just thinks, oh, that's why he's not drafted. You know, like, that's that's, that's what everybody saw with him. Whereas if he was picked in, like, the second or third round, I think people would look at the good plays that he makes and be like, yeah, we can build around this guy for the future. So uh, I go back and forth, you know? Like, in D.C., it's a sliding scale of quarterbacks because besides, you know, a season of Robert Griffin, we haven't had a lot to cheer for at that position for the last, oh, 30 years. So it's tough. I thought Donna McNair had a nice little run over there. No, no. He beat the Eagles. <laughs> You're misremembering. Aaron, Don McNabb got so fat in D.C., he got benched for Rex Grossman. That's right. Yeah. That's right. They were, and, yeah. and, and Mike Shanahan yeah. was doing everything that he could to not yeah. call McNabb fat, but also call him fat. He was like, he Man, needs better cardiovascular endurance uh, to, <laughs> to play quarterback here. Uh, hey, are you guys going to like re- retire Kirk Cousins' number? Like, It's pretty bleak over there. Yeah, that's about it. Kirk, like that, that one, you like that game was probably the non RG three highlight that I've had to root for on what that about, team. Uh, what, what about what about Jason Campbell, man? Cam- Jason Campbell he wasn't bad. He he wasn't bad quarterback, but he was always like a wait for next year. He's gonna be he's gonna take that next step next year. And then mm. he didn't do a whole lot. You know what? I actually remember I maybe you guys can tell me because I'm just speaking from a fan perspective on this, but you can remember moments in an athlete's career where they just lose their confidence and they never get it back. And there was a big moment in Jason Campbell's career. It was actually his first pass that he threw. First of all, actually, <laughs> the fact that Joe Gibbs kept him behind Mark Brunel, who was playing on half a hip and one ankle for, you know, two years. I feel like he had to be on the bench just being like, you got to be kidding me. I'm not better than this guy that's out there. Uh, but then his first pass in the NFL, he threw like a 60-yard bomb to Brandon Lloyd who had like a step and a half on the defender and it went through his arms and you could just see in that moment, him get so dejected and he just stopped throwing the ball deep after he didn't want to take any chances after that. So it became like a check down guy. I don't know if there's like a play that you guys remember where it has like affected, maybe it's affected your play in like a positive way where you make one play and then you're like, you know what? I can do it. I can play at this level. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. My, my, a play that changed my life was my sophomore year. We was playing Penn State in the Outback Bowl. Uh, I fumbled 
Um, and for whatever reason, Tennessee fans, that's all they remember me for. Um, but that play, dog, was just etched in my memory because it was just the, the press was so on my bumper about everything. And just every, it just changed my entire life from my perspective on how I worked. Like, I went into overdrive after that shit. That shit changed my life. Oh, so it was a bad play. It was a negative play. That bad you play off. changed my life. So you'd like, to, yeah. you'd like to thank the media for doing their job. And holding no, you fuck them niggas. <laughs> no, fuck them. Fuck all them niggas. <laughs> fuck all them niggas. Y'all got, do y'all have a play like where it's like either boosted your confidence or ruined your confidence? Because I have many stories about cats yeah. where I've seen them. I've seen uh, a play happen and yo, they had just never recovered. I'd probably say <clears throat> my first touchdown run, rest our freshman. First carry, first college carry, took it 69 for a Teddy. Mm. Like, up. They really, they really told me like, yeah, youngin, you supposed to be here. Mm-hmm. Cause I, at that know. time, like I'm third on the depth chart. So like, it ain't looking bright, but then I get, I made a couple plays and he turned me up. Mm-hmm. That's the, that's the beautiful thing about sports in my opinion. It's like, it really encapsulates uh, momentum. And it's like very directly transferable, like shit that happens in life. Like one thing can happen that could send your life in a whole nother direction. Same with the game or entire career. Sure. Sure. Okay. Uh, if I would say it by me, it was our first game last year. We played South Carolina. I didn't play like the whole game. And then like the third quarter I got in and I had a tackle for loss my first play. And the same shit, that shit just kind of turned me up, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And then it seems easier after you make a play like that, I'm sure, where, like, because you believe in yourself, you move more confidently. You're okay. able to, to, like, tap in. You stop thinking so much about it sometimes, I would imagine. And you just kind of, you trust yourself and you let it go. Thanks. I'm just speaking from my experience as a guy who dunked one time. And then <laughs> that, was, that was a life-changing moment for me. Yeah, one hand, never one hand, you one hand, two hand. You never dunked. You never dunked. One, hand, one hand, two hand. One hand, two hand. Send him, send him the clip of me getting rim from last year. Man, uh, no, it was a 9'5 rim at best. All right, even if it was a 9'5 rim, as a person who's 5'8", that's, that's still pretty impressive, right? Not. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I know some five, six, five, sevens that can they can do some. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are they are they the same color as him? <laughs> I know some. I know some that I do have the dunk. Well, right. well, he was in like seventh grade. He was like five ten. He was dunking that ball. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because you guys have a, an awesome basketball player right now. Is he a freshman, Big T? Freshman, eighteen years old. So his name is Zakai Ziegler. Zakai Ziegler. You guys know him? Dude, I don't know him personally, but dude is a bucket. He is a bucket. He's like five foot seven, five eight, right? And he's he's just dom- he dominated UNC the other day. You're like twenty three. Get yeah, them boys get buckets. Mm-hmm. He can dunk, by the way. I saw him dunk in warm ups. Good. Yeah, I think he should be our Tennessee macrodosing athlete for basketball. I think for sure. That dude can play. He's a short king. Yeah, he cold. He bucket. Yeah, um, Billy, you have any questions for for these guys? You got anything you want to dig into them with? Who do you guys think killed JFK? <laughs> Good question, Billy. It was an inside job. Oh God, it was. No, it inside job. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of suspects out there. We're going to get to the bottom of it on today's show, but I mean, I I think one thing that we can almost all agree on as Americans is that we don't believe that it was just one guy acting alone, right? It's like ninety percent of America doesn't buy that shit. Hey, bro, you can't you can't you can't pull something off like that by yourself mm-hmm. for sure. Okay. Yeah. So it had to be inside job. One man like, hanging it. it done, killing the president. Stop it. Yeah, and then what happened after the fact where Jack Ruby shot the guy that shot the president like a day after almost. You don't just do that because you're mad. You do that because you need to tie up some loose ends. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Agreed. We knew the person they killed him. Definitely did. Mm-hmm. Uh, Big T, you have any Tennessee-related questions? I think we about covered it. Okay. Just beat beat Vandy this weekend, y'all. Beat yes, Vandy. Sir. Yeah, Vandy is um, they're they're that one team where I feel like every conference has a team like that. In the Big Twelve, it's Kansas, uh, where if you lose to that team, then you you don't want to lose them just because of the jokes that are going to get thrown your way for the <laughs> next year, right? I know yeah, I know you're not overlooking Vandy, but this isn't a question; it's more of a comment. 
their fans are uniquely awful in that like Florida fans, Kentucky fans, Georgia fans, they all they're all relatively the same. They act similarly. Vanderbilt fans are a unique type of horrible because they don't care when they lose. So when you beat them, they're like, oh, who gives a shit? You're a 31 point favorite like you're supposed to win. Mm-hmm. And then when you lose one out of every 12 times to them, they, it, they put on Christmas cards and it's the Super Bowl <laughs> and it makes me want to jump off a bridge. You know why they like that? Because they're the worst. Because of James Franklin. That's, that's also true. Yeah. And they're still living in 2012 when they, they went 7 and 5 once. Vanderbilt. Tennessee lost to uh, Vanderbilt. Yeah. They're still just, they're what, feeling just, the James Franklin era, and then beyond that, it's like, well, there was the Jay Cutler era. That was okay. another 10 years before that. Well, and then they, they did get us a couple times fairly recently, but that those coaches don't count. So <laughs> okay. just right. just don't let it happen again, please. So, uh, what are you, I, I trust y'all. I want to check in real quick on, on the, the pulse of the fan base because, obviously, Big T, we try to teach him the right things to do as a fan. You know, if you're attending Tennessee Volunteers games, he had some questions a couple of weeks ago, like, should I throw mustard onto the field, or should I throw tennis balls and golf balls on the field? We told him, no, do not do that. How has the behavior been at the stadium the last couple of weeks? It's been good. I mean, controlled, controlled uh, rowdiness. You no, know? I would have been pissed too as a fan. That's yeah, I definitely. Yeah, like I passion did. for the team in the game. They they be acting how they post that. They they. I have full confidence if some stuff like that happened again, they'll throw trash again. So we good. Okay. It sounds it sounds like this until, is until, until they get the to uh, that shit to that shit hits you, yeah. but you feel a little different. Until, until the game, yeah, until they say Yeah, until, until it's on my side, continue. then I'm gonna be hot. Okay. No, until they yeah. say the game will not continue if the fans don't stop. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was too far. When they said they was gonna cancel our game. Cancel the game and we, we was down. We was in the game, yeah. Yo. We had the game with a drive. So they was gonna kill the game and that would have ruined that would have clipped all that. Yeah. Does it affect you as a defensive player, Tyler, if, if the fans are being really, really loud? Because you always hear about, you know, you're not able to get the play call in in time. You can't yeah, hear like, each other in the huddle on offense. Yeah. But on defense, is there something like it's got to be harder for you to communicate too? It's sometimes, right? No, not necessarily. We don't really even say too much. Just everything is by hand. So I, I like that shit. When, that, when it's like super loud, that shit turn me up. Okay. I like it. Get loud. Aaron, you got anything else for the guys? Nah, man, continue to uh, ball out, do things. I'm rooting for everybody black. Yes, sir. All right. Love it. Thank you, Aaron. Beautifully Hold said. On, wait. We'll be in contact. You said what? So we'll be in contact. Holla at me. So yes, sir. And I'm going to DM you. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, have, uh, Hawk my address. What's up? All right, my G. Y'all be easy, Wait, dog. Where's uh, y'all be easy. Billy has a. Billy did has you guys a see this video of Jordan Davis chasing down a dude? Ha, what did he ever get to you, Hendon? No. Did you ever see him running at you? No. He, not, he ran out that fast, Billy. Calm down, man. He's that fa- <laughs> Hendon's faster he's, though. He's he's know, he's, 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 fast. he's fast oh. for his size. Yes. He's, he's big. T- he's faster than that dude. He's not, he's not <laughs> fast. Let me get quick to be that massive. Yeah, he's not like. It's not like, damn, this nigga can really run. It's like, you feel me? All right. It's like Vince Wilfork. When Vince Wilfork used to get a little yeah, bit. You feel me? Like, I remember what I said. Yeah, like Vince Wilfork. Mm-hmm. He was terrifying. I mean, I mean, I mean let's, just, let's just not throw around like Hall of Fame namers to a oh, cat. Mom, and cat. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's wrong with y'all? Well, he, no one here. what he's supposed to be doing, but he's not. You feel me? I play, I play with Vince, man. He a goat, man. Calm down. Of course. Yeah. Did he ever make you food? Yeah, actually, he cooked for us. He's a good cook, right? Goes down. <laughs> I just love it when he says the word ribs. It's, it How makes it? it makes me hungry. He just goes ribs, like real low. <laughs> it's great. It's great. It, it'll make you hungry if you watch it. All right. Well, you guys have <laughs> you guys have a happy Thanksgiving. Are you able to like get away, be with family at all this week, or is yeah, it the just family coming up? Family so. coming up. Okay, uh, real quick, give me a power ranking of uh, the best side dishes at Thanksgiving. I ain't gonna lie, it's three of them that can't be can't. one, two, or three. Come on now, I'm here. Yams. Yes, sir. Collard greens. Dressing, yams dressing, and the greens, yeah. And the mac and cheese. Like, uh, nigga, you got a, you got a, 
you got a D2 school in the top three. Ooh. Oh, about Dressing? <laughs> what? He is old. Dressing? Oh, no. Mama, he's yeah, right. right. yeah, definitely supposed to be what's mac what's and cheese. It's supposed to be mac and cheese. Yes. And, and collard greens. You don't eat, you don't eat I'll cheese. I'll check that. I take cheese, mac and cheese. Yeah. I know, but I'm For saying, me, mac and cheese, I'm, no that's point. a general though. I don't eat it, but I'm saying that's the general. Oh, I was going, oh. Yeah, you see? I, nigga, no, don't, don't do Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese is no Dr- Dressing's oh. like bottom tier shit, bro. Oh, oh, no. All right, fuck you, Harry. Hey, hey, it gotta be, it gotta be on play. Harry, where you from? Bro, huh? Where you from? I grew up in Albuquerque, New Mexico. High school in San Diego. Don't cook real soul food out there, bro. <laughs> don't even cook real soul food. Where you, where you from? I'm from Nashville. Nigga, y'all was listening to yeah. fucking Dolly Parton at Thanksgiving. Shut up. That nah, sounds like a lovely time. Yeah, that's <laughs> Dolly Parton. Nah, she's actually made. I love Dolly Parton. Yeah. But nigga, why do you dressing not... is like one of the Maybe worst fucking roll soul food out there. Aaron, you're you're I, wrong. I, 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 how about how about how about call my mama and you tell her she don't cook soul food, nigga? <laughs> Out of respect, like you and your family are not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, I, bet. I, pre- I appreciate that. You call my sister and tell her she don't cook soul food, nigga. What? Hey, I'm going to need a picture of it. I'm going to need a picture. Shit. How about this? I, I DM you a picture of my Thanksgiving plate, and you give me a uh, picture you of your dry-ass plate. My plate going to be dry. We're in North Carolina. We know what we're doing. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Where y'all, going? Where y'all going for Thanksgiving? We used to have a chaplain. Uh, a chaplain. We used to go to his house, or like we, we, we used to uh, hop going? around. Where, where y'all going? I'm gonna probably I'm gonna go to my uh quarterback coach house. Um but my mama coming up here to cook, so I'm staying with them par- uh priority. I'm do sure. that. Let me I need, I need a plate, I need a plate. I'm gonna see the plate. I'm gonna send you a plate, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'll I'll see. Send- I need I need to see your plate for sure. Yeah, yeah. I have a whole plate, <laughs> my, my, my whole plate full of dressing, <laughs> dry ass dr- nigga croutons. It ain't even dressing. You don't know croutons. shit about dressing, Aaron. You hey, Aaron, the right. fact right. that you don't like you're dressing right. tells right. me that your dressing is not good. I would agree. Dressing is the bottom tier of Thanksgiving. Here, here, here. You know what it is? You know what it is? I'll put it right above turkey because turkey fucking sucks. No. You don't eat the cranberry you sauce? Don't want to you, know, you, don't, you, don't, you don't eat cranberry sauce? No, he said there was the turkey. Like, I don't eat with the turkey. Oh. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. You, I think as a national... It just says as a, as a as a as a country, we need to come together and and decommission turkey as a Thanksgiving meat and 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 put brisket. I nominate brisket over turkey. I never really ate no. brisket like it. No, I just brisket brisket is the one. Like, think about it. How much turkey do you eat besides Thanksgiving? You don't really eat turkey because yeah, it's not that good. Turkey, bro, you'll never reheat turkey. I um, think I think you guys need to have deep fried turkey because that changed my life. Now I want to eat turkey for every meal because it's that good. It's turkey. just it like just makes it tolerable. Tolerable. better meat. You would like that even more. Than I would rather have chicken, honey bay ham. Yeah, chicken That's is definitely so over turkey for me in Thanksgiving. I'm telling that you guys, if you have deep fried turkey, it'll change the way that you approach the entire holiday. I could deep fry this shirt and it would be delicious. Like that has nothing to do with the turkey. <laughs> that shirt. <laughs> this yes. Yeah. Specifically, this one probably be better to eat than to wear. No, you wear worse shit than this. Yeah, oh, yeah true. That's a fact. <laughs> Of all the people that chirp me about a shirt, you are not the one. I know, I know. No, but deep fried turkey changed your life. Dressing, that's a bad take, Aaron. And if anybody not. who's not from the South is listening, um, that's stuffing. We're talking about yeah. stuffing, like cornbread stuffing or whatever. You, you make it with, like, sausage. You put some, like, a shitload of butter in it. You drizzle it with a little bit of gravy. It's amazing. Sage. You got a lot of sage leaf in there. Send me your plate, too. I want to see a picture of your plate. I'll too. send you a picture of my, my world-famous mayo mac. Yeah. Yeah, man. No, it's it's what I put nah, out. Every you no, don't put mayonnaise in the mac and cheese, no, I, dog. But every, I know every, you don't. Yeah, every, you're not a trifling that'll be fam. Hey, that, that's illegal. My granny is dead ask me to Thanksgiving. That's illegal. Every year I do a fake macaroni and cheese recipe and I put it on Twitter just to piss people off. And it's just like oh, bo- I, I just boil macaroni and then I take a big <laughs> ass thing of uh mayonnaise and then I act like I'm gonna cover it in there and put it in the oven and people get Heated at me for what I'm doing to my macaroni uh, and cheese. That shit is sacrilegious. No, it is. It would be, but I I make good macaroni uh, and cheese. I love Thanksgiving. It's my favorite holiday. Turkey is essential in Thanksgiving, though. If you I'm cook it correct. Favorite holiday? I think Thanksgiving's my favorite holiday because you just wow. you hang out with your family. You that's eat a, hot a lot take, of good actually. food. And a lot, that's a hot that's take. all of the holidays. You you do that so far, you've described all the holidays. No, but Thanksgiving's <laughs> more about like family, <laughs> like good things. It's about it's about genocide. Yeah, Christmas isn't no, about not. that at all. 
It's I definitely about genocide. No, it's about eating turkey. <laughs> of course, you don't talk about what Thanksgiving is with your family? No. no. We talk about what we're thankful for. It's crazy. Like, the history is kind of irrelevant. Right <laughs> the I history is irrelevant? I'm not getting into well, this conversation. I would, say, at, I, would, I would not go to say it's irrelevant, but we don't no, really irrelevant talk about it. at the actual <laughs> yeah. holiday. During the holiday, like, when you're talking okay, about okay, your family. Yeah. Okay, you you you're not wrong about that. Yeah, but. we don't we don't sit down at our table and like here here's some mashed potatoes. Oh, by the way, what do you know about smallpox? Yeah. Like that's not <laughs> you know, the run up. The run up. I would be totally right. down no, if we change the run up, like how it's taught in schools and whatever. But when I'm sitting at the table with my family, I'm not talking about like I know I know Billy. It was just a joke. I was just fucking fucking and, with you. Billy. And also, really underrated part about Thanksgiving is there's football on TV yeah. while you're oh, eating this yeah. big meal. So. Give me Christmas, Christmas, yeah, though. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas is the best yeah, holiday, Christmas, though. Christmas blows out Thanksgiving in a way that I, I don't even know what to compare it to. That's how much of a bloodbath it is. Like, it's not even a comparison. But Thanksgiving is the halftime show between, like, yeah. like, like Halloween's the first quarter of holiday don't season. Don't compare Halloween to Halloween. Thanksgiving. People's Halloween's way better than Thanksgiving, isn't it? Yeah, if well, you're four. Are you kidding? No, Halloween's <laughs> so much better. It's got a better aesthetic. Nah. It's got better. Oh, that's what Halloween, bro. Halloween might be the weakest holiday. No cap. Oh shit. Thanks. I say Val Easter. Val Easter. Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Easter awesome. sucks. Valentine's Day. That's a bad take. Valentine's, that's Day. A bad take. Valentine's oh, Day. That's Some of the best New Year's. Little was Valentine's Day. Getting that Valentine's letter from that little. You feel me? <laughs> bro, that was it. New, Year's, <laughs> New Year's Eve sneaky is the worst holiday. Chris Christmas has too many has too many like stuff to do. Like you have too many commitments on Christmas. People start celebrating Christmas no. before Thanksgiving. That's how much better Christmas is. Yeah, Correct. because because Christmas is a marketable holiday where people are just trying to get money out of Thanksgiving. Yeah, is still pure. Where oh, it's like no, six thousand oh, 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 Thanksgiving all holidays. All holidays are marketable, though. All of them. The only one is big turkey. Big turkey is the only. Well, and people use Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving for Black Friday. Well, that's Boom idea. roasted. That's true. That's true. Shop the Black Friday sale on yeah, sh I don't, Shop I don't, the Black Friday right. sale. You will never we'll catch me lining up after eating a meal with my family well, whole, outside of Best Buy in 30 degree the weather. The whole thing <laughs> is, is that Black Friday, like traditionally as we view it, like really just doesn't happen like that anymore. I feel like I feel like everything's like Jeez. Cyber Monday now. Yeah. Good. Can you imagine like being if you're an employee at like Best Buy or, or I feel Walmart, like Best Buy's the and, classic like everyone and you has have, to Walmart. You have to go into work at like. 4 30 in the afternoon on thanksgiving right to let people rush through your doors and shove each other on the ground for a dvd player no one's saying it's a good thing i feel bad for people that have to work on thanksgiving for that but yeah thanksgiving uh -huh. is it's a great holiday i i don't appreciate all the slander behind it because there's nothing better than sitting down with the people that you love having a big meal maybe getting a little wine drunk early in the day and watching the lions lose i feel like also that Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, er, Chris, christmas has the same at least in my family the same Lovely. menu <laughs> as thanksgiving but then you also could just get presents so like that's a added bonus but also there's like there's a lot more commitments like going to like different places nah, uh, but you do that at thanksgiving well, what what are your commitments on, like, on going christmas to church, I'm so like going to midnight mass like you do not have to go to church no. I, I, billy yeah. does well billy's going to heaven guys <laughs> billy <laughs> billy's uh, you're a scientologist nigga <laughs> I feel like I feel like God looks down. And he he takes notes of the people that he hasn't seen in a year on Christmas when they show back up. That's that's it's where like, you gotta pay your dues. It's like where were you? You're, you're, the other Billy's a C and E Christmas oh, Christmas and Easter, don't you? Yeah, no, hundred percent. Now they're gone. They just they just they just they drop out. Big we cut out. God is out of here. <laughs> no, 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 no. Thanksgiving's yeah. just, Thanksgiving's just Fourth of July with worse food. <laughs> You're an That's idiot. Facts. You're fourth? an idiot. Worse food than the Fourth of July. The Fourth of July is just burnt. Are you kidding me? Fourth, fourth of July is way I better food than Thanksgiving. That's though. your Fourth of July. Real bananas. Fourth of July has much better barbecue. Like than it's bar it's barbecue though. You right. talking about them hot dogs you get at Costco and shit? No, fam. Like we throwing down on Fourth of July. You you can't compare outdoor holidays and indoor holidays. What? what are you what are you talking about? We're comparing holidays. You yeah, putting all these other shit on it. Those are out like if you wanted to compare outdoor Bumble, holidays versus indoor holidays. What are you talking you about? That's a like, northeast that's a northeast coastal take of you, Billy. But Memorial plenty of people Day. You can compare Memorial Day to July 4th. You're talking yeah. about D2 holidays. Yeah, yeah, Memorial anything. Day is not making the schedule. He got he has a point though. He does. Lord indoor is, versus outdoor, right? No. I think like Easter. Who does the Easter egg hunt inside? A lot of people. Yeah. A lot of yeah. people. 
For no, sure. hell no. That's weird. What do you mean? What do you mean? It's snow on Easter. Yeah. Right there, if, it's, so it's, if it's raining outside, that's I ain't I'm never had no Easter word. Right. Bad day. <laughs> now, oh, oh, because you have it, my nigga. Like, <laughs> Easter, Easter's another one. There's a lot of commitments. Like Thanksgiving, Billy. just what chilling. Billy, Billy, you know, Billy, 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 there's no commitments on any holiday, dog. That's literally what holidays are for, so that you chill. Yeah, you're making the I commitment. Think, I think Thanksgiving, like there's, you start eating at like two o'clock, and then you're actually just chilling for the rest of the day. I don't know. I didn't have Thanksgiving when we ate at like nine. That's that's how you should that's how you should do all holidays, dog. It'll make your life easier. Yeah, true. I think they just a meat all thing. day. Yeah, yeah Billy, it's just food too, right? around like one. Maybe before that. Wait, when do you when do you guys start your Thanksgiving meals? You start snacks early. Or, yeah, you start snacks early. around like eleven or noon, but you don't sit down until I don't know. Like I say three, three, two, two, three, yeah, two, three, four, yeah, two, and two, three, four. Like because yeah, you two. you prepare it even the day before. Like they prepare the size. Yeah. Does yeah, someone say that you the day before? Start eating yeah, at nine a.m. Does someone say nine? Oh. If you got eight at nine, yeah, we can get nine p.m. Yeah. Oh, who said nine p.m.? Nah. That's too late. I, he said, I've had it at 9 p.m. one time before. No okay. That's that's procrastination. They somebody yeah. fucked up. They dropped the ball. They yeah. dropped the ball. Yeah. Got to turn the oven on or something. Yeah, yeah something, something happened right there. Let nah, me get one more ranking from you guys. What about pie? Where do we stand on the just like pies? pies. This is a, Apple this pie, is like, potato pie is their mother. Sweet potato pie. pie. Yeah, this is a cultural thing here. Uh, what about what about pumpkin pie? Do we like pumpkin pie or no? That's it's no one's matching the best pie yet. I'm getting it's excited. a it's a, it's a fake it's a fake sweet potato pie. Pumpkin pie is a fake sweet potato pie. It's tolerable, but it's not sweet potato pie. Yeah, it's, it's, it's edible, but it's definitely not sweet potato pie. You, you guys have nut out like where's the pecan pie? Yeah. In all this? I mean, that's yeah, not the best one, but oh, I'll take a slice mm. though. It definitely definitely go crazy. Mm. I, I like I like sweet potato sweet potato reigns supreme, and then yeah. probably apple. I go mm. apple. Cherry and, pie, uh, crazy though. Peach um, cobbler. Oh yeah, peach cobbler is a top tier dish. Crazy. Top oh, tier dish. Cobbler's good. Cobbler. I like <laughs> I like pecan pie. The problem is if I'm having pecan pie, I have to have ice cream on it. Because it can get it can get like a little sticky sometimes. You need that's to a like, problem? It down. Is no, that's I, a problem? I'm just, I'm just saying I prefer that. <laughs> I have to add more delicious treats to my pie. What a what a <laughs> it's like Billy talking about commitments. You're committed to the ice cream. Sweet potato pie with a little bit of whipped cream on it is, I think it might be the goat pie. And I'd take pie over cake. I don't even need We got a place that got pie up here, fam. Hold on. I don't got pie nowhere. My, my mom coming over here. This uh, carrot, carrot cake can actually compete with a lot of pies, though. Carrot cake. Like a good carrot nice. cake, yeah. Is, ca on is caramel cake. cake better than carrot cake? I've never had caramel cake. I've never had caramel cake either. What is that? Oh, oh. It might be some shit. Like, my granny made caramel cake crazy. Oh, dude, it's fine. I've heard of it. Yo, this is this is actually a generational question. Y'all young. I was actually talking to some like twenty year old um, that had came over to the house. Uh, her, she was the cousin of somebody else that was here, and she was like, "Yo, young cats don't be playing spades like that." And I was like, "There's no way." We don't play spades. We play spades. Thank, th uh -huh. thank you, thank you. I I'm gonna send this. I'm gonna clip this and send it to her. Cause like, dog, you bugging? She's like, "Watch, I'll ask all my friends." It's like, "All your friends are lame." I was like, "Dog, it's a writer." I was like, it's a rite of passage. Like, there's no way they dropped the ball on this generation. I, I refuse to believe it. I'm thank you so much. I'm happy. I could, I could die happy, man. Teach your kids, youngins, teach your kids to play spades, man. It is a rite of passage. Jesus Christ. All right, thank y'all, man. It's what about Tom? Y'all be talking. Y'all be talking. Yeah, Tom. Come on. Y'all be talking. Y'all be talking. Y'all be, be talking with the Pell Grant. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> Hey, hey, clip that out. Clip that out. Clip that out. <laughs> <laughs> we play in the space, though, just about every week, though. Good, good. All right, man. Yeah, that's what we're P5. Yeah, we, we even get on the game systems here recently. Got you, got you. <laughs> Shit. All right, man. All right, y'all. Thanks, y thanks for coming on, guys. And thanks for helping to educate Arian about how his dressing sucks. Dress is trash. <laughs> I'm, I'm at a picture of all y'all plates please thank oh, you I'll very much you. I'll, oh, you pictures. I'll show you Send my meat me. and then and, 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 and then take a picture <laughs> <laughs> all right bye guys good luck that's your cue to leave please 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 <laughs> yeah. the Tennessee Minute is brought to you by our great friends over at BetterHelp you can go to betterhelp.com slash dose get 10% off your first month 
I always love it when people send me screenshots of them signing up for BetterHelp, giving it a shot. It's always great to talk to people. Uh, if you have something that's been weighing heavily on your mind, you have to get it off your chest. Maybe you're not ready to go make an appointment to see a doctor in person just yet. Uh, BetterHelp is a great way to get started. It's great to share your thoughts, your feelings. It makes you feel lighter, makes you feel more productive. It puts you in a better headspace when you can get all these emotions out, verbalize them, and talk to a professional that can help you with anything you might be dealing with in your personal life. You can think about therapy through a bunch of analogies. We get our cars tuned up to prevent bigger issues down the road. We get annual checkups and we go to the gym to stay physically fit and we prevent injury and disease. We also do chores regularly, some of us, to avoid a giant mess of it at home. So going to therapy is like all the above. It's routine maintenance for your mental and emotional wellness to prevent bigger things down the road. Maybe you don't feel like you have a lot of anxiety. Maybe you don't feel like you have any, I don't know, rage or depression issues that are building up inside of you. But it means that it's investing in yourself to keep your mind healthy when you see your therapist. And Barstool Sports agrees they're offering better help services to their employees as an added benefit to help take care of their overall well-being. BetterHelp is customized online therapy. It offers video, phone, even live chat sessions with your therapist. Depending on your level of comfort, you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. You can do it over the phone or you can do a video call if that's what you want to do. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. You can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. It's so fast. It's so easy to do. You should not put this off any longer. If it's occurred to you, maybe I should see a therapist. Maybe I should talk to a professional. Now's the time to do it because we are sponsored by BetterHelp and we're going to give you 10% off your first month. So you can go to betterhelp.com slash dose. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash dose. You're an idiot for the dressing take. You really are. Yeah, I hear you, man. You're an idiot for Thanksgiving's the best holiday take. That's yeah, that's I agree. I agree with that take. Thanksgiving is the best too. holiday. I, I got plenty for both of you. <laughs> I said this shit. This shit is free, dog. Yeah, I, no, no uh, limit on how many people are calling it. Any, I, this isn't a new thing either. Like Thanksgiving, like it, it's a placeholder. Like it's the middle of the good holidays. I well, it just is, like it's. I, I use it solely as a line of demarcation for when I can start listening to Christmas music. A hundred percent. I'm talking yeah. about people. People are already listening. Mariah Carey's uh, "All I Want for Christmas Is You." I bet is starting to climb the charts again. Oh, uh, every Already. November, every every midnight November first, she tweet, she has a video ready to go, and it re-enters the top hundred every. And year. it is unquestionably the best Christmas song of all time. Right. Don't care what Andy. It is amazing. Whoa, I, I it, once whoa. we played. It's not it to, even close. It's not listen, even close. We played it to end my wedding in July, and the place went up. It was <laughs> fire, incredible. Fire. Moment. There's no fire. Wait, you disagree with that take, Big T? You think? You Jingle Bells fan? Uh, well, my personal favorite, I'm not saying my personal favorite is the best of all time because I know a lot of people probably don't even know it, but it's Christmas and Dixie. That's my favorite Christmas yeah. song. No. Um, no. I think the, uh, the best Christmas song, that's certainly up there. I'd have to go, look, give me five minutes. Come on. Let me go look through my, my yeah. five minutes. My, I got to look through my Christmas playlist. Big, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Big T, you got right, to make that. I, rec Look, I recant my five minutes. I think Fel Feliz Navidad might even be a better one than Mariah Carey. Top two. I got top. I got three. I got three, right? Okay. Matter of fact, hold on. My top three is All I Want for Christmas is You, right? I think I think Feliz Navidad is a better song, yeah. right? But 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 this, but the it has the most appeal. Like All I Want for Christmas is You is just the universally beloved. Yeah, it's just universally loved. Like I'm, I'm, with, I'm with you, Billy. Like just choreographed. Uh, schematically, the Feliz thing, Navidad is amazing. All all the things I like about Christmas are like more Thanksgiving things, whereas like the super commercialized <laughs> like Mariah Carey, Mariah Carey playing in like the mall, I'm just like not as much about. Mm -hmm. What about? Do you think that you would you would be able to recognize a Christmas song if the lyrics like? Is there some specific about Christmas songs with the tonality? And yeah. like how the the bells bells very bells. heavy on bells bells bells. Oh, uh, I think that's the the defining and, factor. And the, so uh, give it my top three. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, man. Dog, go ahead. Shakers, yeah. Shakers, the Glockenspiel sometimes. I don't know. Glockenspiel, yeah, yeah, it's no, like um the like xylophone, uh, the metal yeah, xylophone. Yeah, yeah. Give me yeah, yeah, what yeah. song is a Glockenspiel in? Give me like an example of it, like a bells. Uh, what? Sleigh bells ring, walking in a winter one. It's, it's the, it's the, the, uh, what's the, what's the song they've turned into like 
uh, hard rock song to sell Lexuses. I know you know oh. what I'm talking about. Oh, they do silver. Uh, is it silver bows? It's like Trans Siberian Orchestra, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah, they they definitely speak, a, uh, they speak a, a feel in that. There's a version that is fire. That there's a lot of different versions of that. But here's here's my top three. Uh, All I want for Christmas is you, Feliz Navidad, and then uh, This Christmas by Donny Hathaway. This Christmas by Donny Hathaway is just gorgeous, dog. Just gorgeous. Was and that- then, and then, I don't know if y'all know this, but Players Ball by Outkast is a Christmas song. It sure is. So it's a and great, it's it's a, yes, it's, no, it was made, okay, so the, the backstory behind this is fucking, it's dope. So Outkast, before Outkast was Outkast, right? They were on, what label was it? Was it Def Jam? I don't know, I don't was know. They so were on, Def? Might have been so so deaf. I, I, I don't remember. But they were they were no. But they were on a, on a label where um, L.A. Reid was the 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 CEO A&R. or whatever. NR and and they hadn't released anything yet. And they were like, okay, your, y'all's first release is gonna be on this the label's Christmas album. And they were like, what the fuck? I was like, dog, we we outcast and our first we have to we have to do a Christmas song. And so like they were just sitting around there kicking. I was like, you know what? Fuck it, we are gonna do us. And they made players ball with Sleepy Brown on the hook that said, all the players play from far away, wearing afros and braids and them gangster rap. That's a Christmas song. Amazing, <laughs> it's amazing. So it's all my Christmas. Hey, we got any Chipmunks fans? In the house right now, Alvin and Chipmunks Christmas music. Yeah, no. We went from we went from players ball to Christmas. <laughs> I, saying, I, saying, I just gave you I just gave you an amazing backstory. You're like, cool. Have you heard the Chipmunks say yeah. shit? <laughs> I also like I like Dolly Parton Hard Candy Christmas, and I like Chuck Berry Run Run Rudolph. Yeah, Run Run, 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 Run Rudolph's good. Oh, you know what? That one's not on my play. I'm putting that I, right I now. Ki- uh, what's another good? I like the color. Uh, I have my one. answer for the best. Grandma oh, got run over by a reindeer. That's so lame. Yeah. <laughs> As as much as I would like to say the best Christmas song is All I Want for Christmas is a Real Good Tan by Kenny Chesney. It's Oh Holy sure. Night. That's the best Christmas oh. song. Oh. Okay. It's not. I like Drummer Boy. Yeah. Another great one. Bing Crosby. Pa Pum Pum. Anything Bing Crosby is really good. I Separate really like Bing the, Crosby. the artist the, from the man. Right. Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> what did Bing Crosby do? I don't know anything about him. Oh, uh, it's a. It's he was a, a man in the 1930s. I think that was enough. <laughs> he was. He was. <laughs> but but he was bad for his time period as well. Okay. Did he do the? Who's the originals? Uh, the, the the song about White uh, Christmas. No, no the that we can't um, the one in Elf. The baby, um, it's cold baby outside. Baby, it's cold outside. Yeah, who was no, who did no, that no. originally? Don't matter. Ray Charles did it best. Yeah, but now that's we, that's likely that's true. I haven't yeah. heard his version, but. <laughs> Bing, I think I there's a, I think it. there's a Bing Crosby version of it. I probably. Uh, Here's did y'all see the new um did y'all see the new um Dean Martin? Uh, oh yeah. They're all the same it's guy. The, it's, it's the it's the it's the new movie on Netflix. I forget what's the what the dude the Asian dude catfishes the white lady, but they end up falling in love. Uh, yeah. I might have yeah. spoiled it. Oops. But anyway, um uh on in that, like because the 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 song um baby is cold outside it's really rapey it's like it's like it's really rapey like it's like she's like trying to leave and he's like nah just you know come stay inside it's really rapey so like she didn't want to sing it and so he's like just you do the, you do your part i'll make it less rapey he says that and then their version of it fired up what is that movie called? oh i did see the clip you're talking about i huh? forget i didn't i don't know the name of the what? movie but i did see that it's clip. called it's called love hard love hard on netflix fire fire little cool, cool little christmas movie nice little rom-com if you're into that shit i love rom-com I will watch it on Black Friday as I spend that day preparing nothing but Christmas music and films. I just love that Big T has a playlist ready to go. Bro, it's I do too. It's been sitting here for a year just waiting to be brought back. We up. we next one of these next episodes we might need to have uh Jeff D. Lowe come in and explain to Arian his uh Christmas movie viewing uh habits. It's insane, right? Genuinely like he I don't want to spoil it, but yeah, it's it he's our movie guy here and his Christmas watching movie watching tradition is the most single most insane thing I've ever seen. Well, he's a creature of habit about a lot of things. Big so, time. Uh, it does not shock me to know because I don't know the the exact extent of it, but I can I can only imagine what Jeff D. Lowe brings to it. Uh, there's another good song, "Oi to the World" by No Doubt. That's a good Christmas song too. If you're into ska music around Christmas oh, time, as many of us are. What about uh, so? Th- is it war is over? John oh, Lennon. The um. So this is Christmas. So this is Christmas. Do they know it's Christmas? Yeah. No. 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 no it's the. Uh, 
Oh, shit. Feed the world. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let them know it's yeah. Christmas, Christmas time. Yeah. yeah. No, wait, wait. It's we John Lennon. You're thinking of a different song, Billy. Yeah. Da, da, yeah, Happy da, Xmas. Da, War is over. Da. Yeah. That's yeah. a good one. I feel like it's been a long time since we've had a real super group of, of celebrities get together and sing a song. Oh, no, well, they for did. Well, they, uh, for Imagine. No, they did. For... Oh, yeah, good point. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, was they, they stopped COVID. They stopped COVID. Guys, after like COVID's a week. Done. Yeah. What was that? Shit was it? horrible. I, I think those days are over. Actually, it's yeah. too much. People's gonna joke on people too much. Like it's just them days is over. They gone. The it was funniest. Like, the funniest shit collapse. was the Michael Jackson joint. I think it was Heal the World. Maybe or one of them. I don't know. But I think it was like I don't know who was singing. Maybe Stevie Nicks or something like that. But she was hitting the note, and you pan to Michael Jackson, and he's like, they are fucking this up. His face is so <laughs> funny, dog. Oh, my God. It's hilarious. Okay, I'm, I'm going to execute a, a cursed Google search, but I'm hoping it's going to come up with something. I'm just going to Google and see what happens. Kid Rock Christmas song. Why oh. would you do that? And see what we got oh, here. Oh, Kid Rock came Big, out with a bang. Big T, you fucking with his new song? You yeah. fucking with a new song, Big T? <laughs> what is it? I don't know. I saw, oh, you'll uh, love it. We you'll got, love it. He's talking about Talking about the snowflakes, you'll love oh, it. Oh, really? I'll check Dude, it out. Dude, it's actually a hilarious yeah. song. All right, so it's we're gonna pretty, it's pretty trash. We're gonna check this out at the same time. This is Kid Rock's "Frosty the Blowman." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> All right, let's see what you got for us, kid. Okay, so we uh, we came up with a little rendition of one of our favorite Christmas carols. This is called. Frosty the Blowman. Ready? Frosty the Blowman was a jolly, happy soul. Yeah. With two bloodshot eyes and a bloody nose and two teeth made out of gold. Frosty the Blowman rode a seven deuce Cadillac. He could chop an eight ball and zoot it up in less than 38 seconds flat. But there must have been all crystal meth in that last line that he did. Cause Frosty robbed a convenience store, went home and <laughs> Okay, and then he cuts out there. Probably mercifully. Good job, Kid Rock. <laughs> Thank you, Kid. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Mr. Kid. Yeah, I'm cool off Mr. Rock. I I do kind of just love that you always know what you're going to get with Kid Rock, though. My dad got a fake tramp stamp at a co his concert one time. That's very cool. Shout fake out Mr. Mad Dog. Yeah. Good rock. <laughs> <laughs> Did I ever tell you guys about when I went to go see Kid Rock perform uh, back in 2016? So I, I was I was covering the um, I was covering the election, and I went to go see Kid Rock perform at the 2016 like RNC thing and uh kid rock gets out on stage and he starts singing american badass and at the start of american badass it just cuts to the twin towers collapsing and it's got kid rock's face in the flames of the twin towers just screaming at you as they're falling down like people running away from his he became one of the twin towers and then he like kicks a door open comes out on stage starts sing singing american badass i was genuinely confused i had no idea what was going on but people seem to like it what what's not to like about that <laughs> i mean there's a, probably a lot of things i didn't know where to start that's what it, that's i think what the issue was it was just like so over the top that nobody could really point a finger and be like this is why you shouldn't do this <laughs> <laughs> so many it's like so many right turns you eventually end up back where you are you did so much wrong that it was it was actually right yeah yeah um you guys want to get into the jfk assassination yeah. I would do that. All right. I know uh, Billy's very, I don't know if the word is excited. Billy's very prepared for this one. He's done a lot of research. He asked us to push back the recording an extra half hour so he could get all his, all his documents in order and all his research in. Um, so right off the bat, let's just take the temperature of the room real quick. Who believes the Warren Commission result, which was that it was enacted, uh, it, was a, it was an act perpetrated and planned by one person, Lee Harvey Oswald, with no help from anybody and no support from anybody. Big T believes it. Yeah. Hmm. Big T, you believe that Lee Harvey Oswald is the guy. Let me ask you this. 
do you think that something at the level of the assassination of a president would this many years later be able to have been kept a secret by if it had you know all the if you say the cia was in on it if lbj had him killed this that and the other if if the amount of people that would have to be involved in that 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 would have remained a secret and well uh it's funny you bring that up because 103 people that are related to investigations surrounding the jfk assassination have died prematurely in a variety of accidents well there's some uh, I won't say 103 that. witnesses, no, asterisk can... witnesses, you can say that like some of them were genuine witnesses, but people around the investigation have been snuffed out at a, at a higher than normal average. People around several people still today get snuffed out at a higher than normal average and nobody seems to think anything of it. That's different. Or it, they'll tell you you're a conspiracy theorist if you if you point that out. It's just interesting that you, you you're standing Lee Harvey Oswald. However, I will say this: the killing of a president is in and of itself inherently a conspiracy. So I don't find any, uh, like whatever you think about this, I think is usually reasonable. So you do you think that is a possibility that Lee Harvey Oswald, when he was stationed overseas, he became a Marxist. He was uh, he was talking to a lot of people who were, um, I don't want to say, like, foreign agents, but friends and associates of representatives of foreign countries. You don't think that any one of them put him up to it. You think it was all his idea, and he personally hated JFK so much. He was like, no, I don't I'm think well, that's, guy. Let's, let's, I think that could have happened. Because that's also a conspiracy. Let's but go, that's not, like, uh, who, I guess, when, but then he came back here and did it himself. We, we need the facts, guys. Okay. Because we're, we're, we're <laughs> Good point. Hold on, be hold on. Before we nose dive deep into it, there's something that happened on the Rassi Knoll that was way more impactful than the JFK assassination. Mm -hmm. Erica Badu was walking on it, and she was butt naked, and you should see it because it's one of the most important things that's happened on the Rassi Knoll. I'm gonna look, if not more important. I'm gonna look this up just for research purposes. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, I'm, dude, naked. I'm dead serious, dog. Okay. I didn't. I didn't know how gorgeous of a woman she was till that came out. And I don't even know if what that's politically that? correct. I would actually. I was good. Early, early two thousand, early two thousand. Twenty ten. It looks like. Who is this woman? Okay. Oh, Who Mad is Dog. This woman. Mad Dog doesn't know Erica Badu. <laughs> She's better than Taylor Swift. How about that. Oh. F oh, fuck off with that. No, I'm dead ass. We you ain't gonna find nobody. Who is she? Is she a singer? Who's uh, Who's Erica Badu? Do you know Do you know the cut, song? Cut your Cut your mic off. <laughs> you know the song Miss Jackson. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Yeah, yeah. So Miss Jackson is, is Erica Badu. Is Erica Badu's mom? Okay. Songs about Erica Badu, Badu, and her mom. Oh, cause she's that awesome. Wait, I'm still confused on who she is though, like as a person. She's uh, Erica Badu is like one of the pioneers of like that soul singing that you've heard a call tyrone you've heard that phrase call tyrone um i think you're underestimating how white i am marion i think i am actually <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i thought call tyrone was a little more universally oh okay i've seen accepted. her i've seen her i <laughs> said <laughs> jesus christ I'm that joke very was informative fire video with black people. i'm glad i looked this up you see what i'm saying though it's very informative yeah that shit was art. <laughs> it was it was artistic beauty. It really was though, because she's 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 one of those artists that I always say, man, artists like true artists, they walk the line of like crazy and brilliant. Like she walks that line, but she's fucking brilliant. She's fire, dog. Do you think that the grassy knoll is the most famous knoll in the history of the world? Is Absolutely. a knoll a small hill? Yeah, I don't even really know what a knoll or is. Or mountain? Are we? Are we yeah, I was to say, are we getting back on the mountain hill thing? Oh yeah, so. I will, a grassy knoll. The grassy knoll. <laughs> I actually just Googled it because I kind of wanted to get a better visual of what it is. And uh, since it is a uh, landmark on Google, there's a lot of uh, reviews and questions. Uh, and it said, how safe is it to drive past this area in open top car is the number one question. That's just a little classic humor there, a little classic. gallows humor. That's funny. Yeah. Um, I like well, it. I'd, say, I'd argue it's pretty safe. There's only one guy who didn't make it through yeah 
It's like saying it's, <laughs> it's way safer to drive to the airport than it is to fly just because you see a right. crash on the news. It's probably the safest null by like the big numbers, you know, when you look One at of. it statistically. It's the only null as far as I'm concerned. Maybe the goat null. Uh, but Semin Seminole. 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 Is, that, is it a reach? Is that yeah. A reach? A little bit of a reach. By the way, I learned that the Seminole tribe <laughs> has their own aircraft carrier. That's pretty That's cool. Pretty do they them. own it or is it named after them? No, they they have they have an aircraft carrier. Where is it in the ocean? No, it's it's on a mountain. They Where, built a, they like, built a ship in, in the a, forest. No, but like in a, <laughs> that you can land airplanes on. Is it in the lake Come or the ocean? Why would an aircraft carrier be in an ocean or a lake? An aircraft carrier would be in an ocean. That's where they are traditionally. Hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. You, why wouldn't it You're, be in an ocean? Yeah, you know, I, I heard aircraft and just thought yeah, aircraft. I, I, that's what you I thought. I like a Air, aircraft, aircraft carrier. I miss, I misheard. My apologies, Billy. My apologies, no, Big no, T. I, My I, apologies, I no BFT. I, I asked if they had it in a lake. All right. Yeah. Um. So that one up. So Billy, run, run me down on some facts real quick surrounding the assassination of so, John F. Kennedy. Let's let's just look at the Warren Commission first. Okay. So the Warren Commission was put together by Lyndon B. Johnson after the assassination, and it came out with 13 facts that they concluded. The shots, this is the first one. The shots which killed President Kennedy and wounded Governor Connally were fired Connolly. From, Connolly were fired from the sixth <laughs> floor window at the southeast corner of the Texas School Book Depository. Number two. President Kennedy was first struck by a bullet which entered at the back of his neck and exited through the lower front portion of his neck, causing a wound which would not necessarily have been lethal. The president was struck by a second bullet which entered the right rear portion of his head, causing a massive and fatal wound. Governor Connolly was struck by a bullet which entered on the right side of his back and traveled downward through the right side of his chest, exiting below his right nipple this bullet then passed through his right wrist and entered his left thigh where it caused a superficial wound there is no credible evidence that the shots were fired from the triple underpass ahead of the motorcade or any or from any other location the weight of the evidence indicates that there were three shots fired although it is not necessary to any essential findings of the commission to determine just which shot hit governor Connolly. There's a very persuasive evidence from the experts to indicate that the same bullet which pierced the president's throat also caused Governor Connolly's wounds. However, Governor Connolly's testimony and certain other factors have given rise to some differences of opinion as to this probability, but there's no question in the mind of any member of the commission that all shots which caused the president's and Governor Connolly's wounds were fired from the sixth floor window of the Texas School Book Depository. This, sh this is number seven. The shots which killed President Kennedy and wounded Governor Connolly were fired by Lee Harvey Oswald. Number eight, Oswald killed Dallas Police Patrolman J.D. Tippett approximately 45 minutes after the assassination. Number nine, Ruby entered the basement of the Dallas Police Department and killed Lee Harvey Oswald, and there is no evidence to support the rumor that Ruby may have been assisted by any members of the Dallas Police Department. Number 10, the commission has found no evidence that either Lee Harvey Oswald or Jack Ruby was part of any conspiracy, domestic or foreign, to assassinate President Kennedy. Number 11, the commission has found no evidence of conspiracy, subversion, or disloyalty to the U.S. government by any federal, state, or local official. Number 12, the commission could not make any definitive determination of Oswald's motives. Number 13, the commission believes that recommendations for improvements in presidential protection are compelled by the facts disclosed in this investigation. Well, that they settles it for me. Investigation to figure out that they needed uh, improvements in presidential protection. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of weird that we haven't had like a real, we had a, a real rash of assassination attempts in the '60s, '70s, '80s. Haven't really seen too much since then. People just stop doing it, I guess. I don't know. People got too much going on. Like, there's too much, too much to distract them. People like, like shit too much. Like, there wasn't a lot going on back then, man. And not a lot like, of good TV shows. Uh, yeah. 
Sports. Like, like, why, like why, why would I go kill the president when I have like four shows I got to catch up on? And you know what I mean? Like I could, mm. I could Google any porn I want to. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's like, so much entertainment. And people are like, I'd rather not kill the president. I'd rather just beat off to like uh, somebody <laughs> you, th throwing up or something. Yep. You could just tweet about him too if you didn't like him. That's true. That's, that's, that's a big, yeah, yeah. Yeah, big uh, outlet today. A lot of people could, yeah, they just, they. This is. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was I was gonna say so like I was just looking at uh, Kennedy's uh, his, his, the, his popularity poll. He was like one of the most well liked presidents. So it's like hard for me to believe that somebody disliked him that much without like any. So like the reason why I kind of believe that is because people that do something like this assassination. We talked about assassinations on the last pod, right? People that people that do um, assassinations, they have, there's like a political reasoning behind it and if you didn't leave a letter if there was no reasoning behind what you did then it was kind of all in vain which defeated the purpose of you taking your life or going to jail in the first place so i, I i'm, I'm on, unless there's something did he leave something well, did could, he... couldn't you couldn't you say that the fact that he didn't leave any information about why he didn't speak to the fact that he was working with a team of other people so it wasn't just him doing it for his own reasons he had some, you know, people that he was in Congress with that were telling him, not actually Congress, but pe people he was planning this out with that were telling him, you need to do X, Y, and Z. This is how we're going to pull off the operation. So he wouldn't have written it up because then that would have pointed to all the other people that he was colluding with at the time. Mm, so, you're, so you're saying if it was an inside job, there would be no reasoning for it because they didn't, they didn't want the reasoning to be known. So yeah. let's, you know, fair. looking into a lot of background on Lee Harvey Oswald, Lee Harvey Oswald is not a very uh, simple person. From the day he was born, there's been a lot of stuff. But all of these documents and these records we have of Lee Harvey Oswald have all come from government institutions. So, for example, there has been a narrative painted as Lee Ar Harvey Oswald as this lone gunman, this very troubled individual who, number one, showed mental health uh struggles early in life signs of violence that was recorded in a u.s uh um a new york city group home uh which is a government institution and then his time in the military which he had several occurrences of problems with authority as well as scoring high on the sniper test there he was a uh, considered a uh, a sharpshooter at one point um and then his times Great. in Russia, and all of, all these records came from government sources. Right. So, basically, all the information that we have on him being this lone individual, his journal, are are mm -hmm. out there and sort of do basically give credit to this idea that he acted alone and he had a very strict ideology that would have caused him to try to assassinate JFK. Well, let's go and what, back. And what was that? Okay, go ahead, go ahead. I, I think we, we can get into Lee Harvey Oswald specifically um, in, in just a little bit. But if you look back, Arian brought it up. He was a very popular president. He was. He was going to get reelected easily. He was one of the most well-liked presidents um, in, in the modern era. Mm. But there were a lot of people that didn't like him. A lot of very powerful people and groups that didn't like him. So despite the fact that most people, uh, most voters in America really liked the guy a lot, he had made big time enemies of the Cubans. He had also, because of the Bay of Pigs invasion, where he tried to take out Castro, he had made big enemies of the people that planned the Bay of Pigs invasion, all of his generals mm -hmm. and the intelligence community that planned this massive operation. So we essentially tried to take over the island of Cuba using our military. And, well, it was partially our military, partially CIA, and partially former Cuban exiles who had left the island when Castro took over. We decided that we didn't want this motherfucker in our neighborhood, so we were just going to go ahead and take his island back and, and keep it for mm -hmm. ourselves or reinstall a more United States-friendly dictator there. So we planned out the Bay of Pigs invasion, uh, Kennedy had a lot of input from you know his top generals, the chief of staffs, all all, all the people in the, um, on the intelligence side, and then they got mad at Kennedy because he didn't provide air support to the invasion and essentially just kind of half-assed it and let a lot of people get killed. The entire operation was a big embarrassment. It was a massive failure, and so a lot of people inside our own government mm 
mm. hated John Kennedy too. So I, I made a list of people. JFK was loved by the majority of Americans because he embodied this idea of the American dream to a great uh, large percentage of the population. He was the son of immigrants who had made it in America and to bootleggers bootleggers and to a lot of Americans that was their story and someone they thought that their child could one day be. So like, you know, a lot of Irish American immigrants saw him as like, Oh, like if we do well in America and I, you know, make it to a point, my son could possibly be the next JFK, Mm -hmm. which is not the narrative for all of America, but the largest voting base at that time, they saw JFK as America's baby. Yeah, and and so in addition to uh, to all those people that we mentioned that might have a grudge against JFK, um, there were also Texas oil interests that hated him, mm-hmm. and the good old mafia. The mafia hated John F. Kennedy, and it always confuses me when I hear like a a, a documentary or I listen to a podcast about Kennedy because they always call him Jack. I guess Jack and John are synonyms now. Like, when did that happen? I don't like that. Wait, what do you mean? Usually, when did that the, happen? the basically the father's John, and then they name the son John as well, but then they just call him Jack. Jack is a nickname for John. I never knew that. You didn't know that? I mean, I, is, I, I kind of agree with you. It is kind of dumb. It is dumb, but it's, it's like Ooh, Jack is a nickname for John. Yeah, it's a white Correct. thing. <laughs> why that's like where it comes because from. it's like the first not wrong yeah so it's john like john's the father he names his son john but you can't have any, be having two johns running around so john jr is usually referred to as jack or I, john john yeah i know well, like, but what where did jack come from? like where does jack come from? like john john doesn't sound anything like jack well it's like, like it's like billy really? and william yeah it's like will also or like also Richard and Dick. also it's also stupid I, also I, stu- yeah I, I don't understand what why but that one's really wild because john's already short as fuck usually like william and bill at least you're shorting and it may, that makes sense yeah at, from that perspective not the sound but john and jack is like you just you're already there just a g eh. It's weird. My my grandfather was named Jack, but he was actually just named Jack. So that's where I, I think I, <laughs> I didn't know that it was a thing that a John could also be a Jack. But but regardless, John F. Kennedy also had made some very powerful enemies Jack, in the mafia. So, Jack Jack Kennedy. So I have yeah. six I have six people, six groups that hated JFK and supporting conspiracies on how they uh carried it out and killed them and how they're related to the whole uh conspiracy. Uh, first is Cubans or Russians, just in a general uh, Cold War, basically war sense. We had the CIA was trying to assassinate several communist leaders at the time. It was just a like a straightforward, you know, the communists wanted JFK dead. And we did assassinate a lot of leaders we too. Did. Second, uh, Cuban refugees for the Bay of Biggs debacle. Basically, they were trained and they felt that they were trained by CIA trained to do this whole thing, but they thought they were left out to dry and not properly supported. Number three is a combination of a inner government conspiracy that involves Lyndon B. Johnson, the military industrial complex, and the idea that JFK wanted to stop the war in Vietnam and ramp down Cold War efforts. And that he was a threat to, you know, how profitable and how much power continual war was for a deep state now this is actually becomes you know in a roundabout way there's currently people sitting at the grassy knoll waiting for jfk jr in relation to this conspiracy which is somehow become intertwined with QAnon. and then uh the fourth uh group is the cia because can you say that part again the okay so so is that Explain the correlation between like the QAnon. They're always talking about JF Kennedy Jr. and how he's still right. So basically, JFK. The the idea is that there was a deep state effort to take out JFK because JFK wanted to stop the war in Vietnam, stop the Cold War, and basically prevent you know uh, larger powerful people from just taking advantage of the population. It's a whole. Th- it doesn't make sense. It, and it actually it. It uh, their connection to that conspiracy sort of doesn't make that conspiracy like that conspiracy does have good points, but the whole QAnon's hijacking of it makes it like 
annoying to talk about. So JFK also, <laughs> J- like, yeah, there was J- something there, but then you guys just shat on it and like made oh. a QAnon. So, so you could build a pretty good argument that QAnon is doing that intentionally. Mm, psyop. Mm. Yeah, could, that would be yeah. I like that. Oh, I there like was, that. Cool. There was no, no, no. Yeah, that's actually brilliant because there was this dude um, who worked in um, what was it? He was in the gaming industry, and he worked on. Uh, I believe it was. I'm gonna butcher it, but it was something like, um, uh, escape rooms, right? But digital, and so he he constructed them, right? And and he was saying how this sounds eerily similar to something that's constructed, like QAnon. He said, like he he he. It was a whole article. I'll, wow. I'll send it to the group chat. Yeah, he he was like, this sounds eerily like something that's constructed, like almost like a psyop. And he was like, one of his references was like, um, he was. He was saying how um, I'm a I'm a, I'm a butcher. I, I'll, I'll get the, I'll get so the article, like the, but like the pu- th- that, there's credence to that. The puzzle idea, as someone who creates puzzles, the yeah, it looks like a puzzle. Yeah, and 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 he and he was saying like a lot of the times because he 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 would like construct uh, these escape rooms, right? And a lot of the times people would look at stuff that was just random in the room that had nothing to do with getting out. And that that people were fixated on it for out for like a long time, oh. right? And he was and he was saying the way that some of these things are are kind of connected, it looks like it's constructed, like from his vantage point. It's a really like dope article. And I, I don't, I mean, I'm not saying that's exactly what it was, but it was it was just along Coley's point. There's like some mm. credence to that thought. Uh, the fit the fifth. Wait, uh, wait. Going back to what you just said, Billy. The um the forces like inside the government. I think a lot of that gets tied back to uh, some people say that John F. Kennedy was trying to fight the like global bankers at the time. And that's why they turned them. I don't think that there's like a whole lot of evidence about that, but that's, that's the connection. I think that a lot of people bring into the QAnon is that they're fighting the globalists. JFK was trying to do that. The, the, the credence I give to this conspiracy has nothing to do with that. It has to do with this idea of Lyndon B. Johnson receiving great funding and power from the military Mm -hmm. industrial complex to keep Vietnam going and that he was involved in killing him, which right. is a popular theory. So so there was a movie that came out in 1964. It's called Seven Days in May. Mm-hmm. Seven Days in May is about the United States government, the generals, the military, mm-hmm. um, specifically taking over the federal government. So mm-hmm. having an, an actual coup that takes place where the military takes over the White House, they wrest control of the United States away from the president. And um, the book came out, I want to say, in 1961. And... JFK loved it because he could see parallels to, I mean, it was, it was written to kind of like mirror some of the things that were going on with the generals that, that JFK was working with. Um, and JFK loved the book so much that he had them film some scenes for that movie in his white house. He like snuck them into the white house and let them film on the property because he thought that the message that the movie was sending was like important enough that the country needed to know that he was actually concerned that the generals would do something like that to him. That's how deeply he believed that they were out to, they, in the back of their minds, they were going to do whatever it, could, it took to get JFK out of power. Uh, the fifth group is the mob. Basically this idea that the mob got JFK elected through his father's influence and that when JFK and Bobby Kennedy started prosecuting racketeering, the mob was just like, we got you elected. We'll take you out too. Yeah, it was. I think it was more so like Bobby when he was yeah. Attorney General, right? And that's he why started. Bobby go- also got shot. He started going after the mob, and there there were actually conversations. I've read a lot of mob books in my day, so like I've read um, some stuff that's written by people that used to be in the mafia that have been, you know, they're they're legit guys that have written their memoirs, and you have to take everything they say with a grain of salt, obviously, because. They would always want to seem like they're super important and the stuff they did was awesome. But there were active conversations going on in the mafia, the, specifically like the Italian-American mafia, about killing John Kennedy. Like they had had those talks. That's, that's legit. So you can put like the mafia for sure at least talked about it and had general plans around how to kill John F. Kennedy. The Cubans <clears throat> and Russians definitely talked about it. They had plans around how to kill John F. Kennedy. So right there, that's we don't know about the others, but those are two of the groups that had definitely put plans in place to do it. And then the last uh, group... Just real quick, going back to what Big T was saying earlier about not trusting that the government could keep a secret that large, 
I would almost trust the government to keep that secret over the mafia. Like the mafia is as well regarded as they are famous for not keeping tight lips. They just told us where Jimmy Hoffa was buried. Recently. No, that was one guy that said it on his deathbed. Like the last thing that he said. Yeah, but they, they took the, the New York Times article said they took the, um, I'm forgetting the name of it, but they saw that there was a, a what looked like a 75 gallon uh, oil drum mm -hmm. in the space he pointed to. Okay. So they they're working on excavating it. I just think that it is possible if if it's done inside the intelligence community and it's kept to like a small enough group of people. I think I could see our own government killing our president. If you have Yeah, some, I agree. If you have someone like, you know, keeping the release of documents, they keep pushing it back every time it gets brought. How do they get someone to do it for them? How do they find somebody? Yeah. That's that's the easy thing. I think that's the easy part. Well, Lee Harvey Oswald was in the military, so they they had a record of you know the people who were great sharpshooters, sure. qualified snipers. Let me just get this last one out, just so that we can then start going okay. through these because we're not going to cover it. My plan is just to go through each okay time by time, and then we can just keep it concentrated. So the last one's the KKK and some sort of uh, segregationist, uh, like down south. And this was one of the first uh, theories on why he was killed because they thought the police was involved, the KKK, some sort of, you know, Southern segregationist movement that saw JFK as a threat to their way of life. But they also hate Catholics too, the yeah. KKK. So another reason. This one Kennedy was the first Catholic president, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't it weird to think that like Catholics used to be super discriminated against? Yeah. Yeah. It was like like. I mean, we talk yeah. about his approval yeah. rating looking backwards, but like as he was ascending, like most people were like, who's this fucking hippie with these radical ideas? Like it was <laughs> it's a very, very weird like mountain he, he ascended to. Has there been another Catholic president? I don't think. Joe Biden is Catholic. Uh, hmm. Are they the only two? Do you believe that, Big T, that Joe Biden's a Catholic? Of course Catholic. not. They all say they're Christians to get elected. <laughs> sure. But Catholic and Christian have like a different vibe. No, ca you're you mean Catholic and Protestant? Catholics no. are Christians. No, no, no I know, I know, but if you no, 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 I know. Well, they used but to call I'm Catholics cannibals. Okay. No, because they ate the Catholicism body. is a one part of Christianity, <laughs> and then there's I, no, Protestantism. I, I know that, but I'm saying that if you say you're Catholic versus if you say you're Christian, those have two different meanings. I think people have taken Christian to mostly mean Protestant sex now. Yes. Yeah, but if you say you're Catholic, that's like. Joe Biden's yeah. the second Catholic president. After JFK. Huh. But, I feel like something's going to happen to him now. Every time we talk about something on the show, it happens in real yeah, fucking Yeah, I life, meant though. to address this earlier. weird, dog. Mm -hmm. I meant to address I mean, this much earlier. I mean, I mean, let's go back. We talked about Madden. All of a sudden, he pops up with Ronnie Lott at some event. Like, we talk about Young Dolph. All of a sudden, he gets off RIP to Young Dolph. Like... Mm -hmm. Yo, it's why every time we talk about something on this fucking podcast, it happens, dog. We got to stay, stay grounded in reality. We do do super long podcasts, and uh, we touch a lot of topics, and those are two examples. You just shot. You just you just shit on my. I on did. My I, don't, I don't want it to be true. So now I'm gonna start. Oh, we're not a powerful. Problem. I mean, I mean, I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's true. Bro. Of course not. No, but I it's. Mean, I, but it's fun to think I, about. I'm gonna be honest. I was researching all this Kennedy stuff all morning, and my brain is completely scrambled. With with everything, I'm like trying to figure out what's real and what's not. So, so, yeah, I so. I had many people tweet at me like I killed Dolph. Oh my god! Uh, yes, which I didn't appreciate, uh, and it was really telling how many people have actually listened to me outside of this show. I reference Dolph surviving those hundred all the time. That was not like a one off. Like here's me bringing this up. Uh, so as I was like pulled, I, like I was. That happened as I was driving back from New York to Maine. Tyler texted me. Uh, he didn't text me what happened. He just texted me what it felt like, uh, which was enough to prompt me to pull over and be like, I know this is bad. Uh, and it was worse than I anticipated. Uh, so, yeah, rest in peace, young Dolph. That was yeah. a horrible coincidence to be talking about uh him the two days before it happened um wow. but yeah but it's, wasn't... but it's that's a like this happens on this podcast a lot and you, we do cover a lot of varieties i'm not saying there's any correlation billy i'm just saying it's it's interesting now to refute 
the uh, the point by point assertion of the Warren Commission, there was also another commission that was put together, the United States House Select Committee on Assassinations. Mm -hmm. So, Time out, real quick before, before before we go into that, what are the documents that current presidents continue to postpone on releasing? Yeah, so there's uh, there's a lot of documents that have been collected in the investigation around the assassination of John F. Kennedy that right. kept getting pushed back. And it was originally scheduled to be released, I want to say, in 2017. And then Trump pushed it back to 2021. And then Biden, just a few weeks ago, pushed that back again, saying that because of the coronavirus, people haven't had enough time to review the documents. I'm not sure I, I totally believe that. <laughs> But I think that's I, the biggest so, thing. That'd be the perfect time to do it. Everybody's sitting around at the crib. So, yeah. for example, some of the documents that have been released since uh, the Warren Commission that they didn't have access to themselves that have just been released were um, the idea that the CIA was actually actively trying to assassinate Castro and other communist leaders. That was something that was not privy to the Warren Commission. So, uh, those are the types of things that they didn't know, the public didn't know during Kennedy's assassination. Right. So in 1976, they established a commission to look at the JFK and MLK assassinations. And um, so they, they completed the investigation in 1978, and they issued a report. Here are the findings from that report. So this is done by Congress. At point number one, Lee Harvey Oswald fired three shots at Kennedy. Second and third shots that he fired struck the president. The third one killed the president. Point number two, scientific acoustical evidence established a high probability that at least two gunmen fired at the president. That was disproved. At le by what? The acoustic evidence was disproven. Point number, when was that disproven? I think it's still like there are people that disagree about it. Uh, because the... Um... This was a congressional report, though. Yes, Yes. Point number three, Wait, the, the committee believes... Where was, go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. Point number three, the committee believes on the basis of the evidence available to it that Kennedy was probably assassinated as a result of a conspiracy. Well, so where is the refutation to the acoustic um, evidence, Billy? Um, no, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying right, here, I'm just curious. I know, I know, I know. So I'm pulling up right now. All right, I'll, I'll get into some others. The committee further concluded it was probable that four shots were fired and the fourth shot came from a second assassin located on the grassy knoll, but missed. The HSCA concluded the existence and location of this alleged fourth shot based on the uh, okay, based on the later discredited Dallas Police Department Dick DeBelt recording analysis. So they're saying that the uh, the Dallas Police Department did not do their job in right. analyzing, but it still it still maintains that there was a conspiracy around it. Right. And so basically there was this idea uh, of a CIA benign cover-up. CIA Director McCone was complicit in a Central Intelligence Agency benign cover-up by withholding information from the Warren Commission, uh, according to a report by um, CIA Chief Historian David Robar Roberge, Roberge. So that was released in 2014. So CIA officers had been instructed to only give passive, reactive, and selective assistance to the commission to keep the commission focused on what the agency believed at the time was the best truth that Lee Harvey Oswald, for his yet undetermined motives, had acted alone in killing John Kennedy. So uh, the CIA may have also covered up evidence of being in communication with Oswald before 1963. Uh, they so one of the biggest things they withheld was CIA plots involving CIA links with the mafia to assassinate Cuban President Fidel Castro. Um, so basically, the CIA had a lot of sketchy shit going on, and they did not want any question more questions asked of them because they were doing stuff at the time that probably, if Congress found out about, they would have really have not liked. So, um, with that. Uh, the whole, these documents, there's, there's more stuff. And I think what Biden said on the recent release documents that are supposed to be released is that there were still, there was still pertinent information of agents in the field, which is crazy to think that people are still involved and could be put at danger by these documents, which is even more sketchy in itself because it means something that was occurring back then is still occurring now. 
and needs to be kept under mm-hmm. wraps. I think that was the exact like the information is still pertinent to current operations in the CIA. So a- after going through like all the different groups that wanted to kill Kennedy mm-hmm. and what we know about what happened that day, I, f- I know that there were a lot of people that were planning on killing Kennedy. There's another guy named, I think, Miltier or Milter mm-hmm. um, that was in progress of designing a plan to kill John F. Kennedy when he was going to go to Miami. And he claimed that he was working with people that were on John F. Kennedy's advance team, like people that were involved in the protection detail to get information about where he'd be at what time. So there were all these people that had plans to kill him. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that Lee Harvey Oswald did it just by himself because he was mentally ill and hated John F. Kennedy for some reason? I think it's possible, but when you look at all the different people that actively wanted him dead— I think it's more probable than not that he was working with somebody else. So this, hold on. Um, I, I don't think I believe in the second shooter theory. I, I think. I don't, I don't, okay. So, so I was looking at, and this is from the U S department of justice office of justice programs. They, this was published in 1983. It's a nine page, uh, document. Uh, and this is the abstracts It's based on primarily the acoustical, yeah, acoustical analysis performed by BBN and the Weiss and Ashkenazi indicating that there were gunshots in Delay 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 Plaza Delay. from Delay Plaza from both I fucking feel like Billy now from both the Texas School Book Depository Building where Lee Harvey Oswald allegedly fired three gunshots and the Grassy Knoll area one gunshot during Kennedy's assassination. The HSCA found in part that scientific acoustical Acoustical evidence establishes a higher probability that two gunmen fired at President John F. Kennedy. This is a government website. Yeah, so that's that's the um, HSCA. That's some of their results right there. There's just mm-hmm. people that, that dispute whether or not the way that the Dallas Police Department analyzed the audio recording, whether or not that was actually done in the correct manner to, to be able to... Yeah, so, it. I mean, that that's sketchy. They said it was, like, from radio scanners. Like, they kind of combined, like, radio scanners, stuff like that. But, I mean, in 1960, what other mode of statistical i mean uh, uh scientific analysis can you can you base it off of you know mm-hmm. there's also a theory that uh that one of the secret service agents actually was the one that killed kennedy because after in the, the car uh not in the car but in an adjacent car so the theory is that somebody mm-hmm. that they heard the shot and the secret service agent turned his rifle misidentified where the shot was coming from where the active threat was and that person was the one that fired the fatal shot by mistake. That one sounds like cat. That hit Kennedy. That one sounds like a little, little bit of cat. So fun, fun fact about when you're looking at the Subruder film, a lot of people have been analyzing it for you know decades. But something that we know now that every makes... time I hear that, I think it's someone saying the Zip Recruiter film. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's just a, Zip Recruiter, the smartest but, way to fire. Yeah, no, you've been, on, you've, been, you've, been, you've, been on, you've been on so many podcasts. <laughs> yeah. So, what makes the video so weird is that in when people think about people getting shot in the movies, if you get shot in the back of the head, your head's going to go forward and sort of just like you're going to slouch. But because JFK had back problems, he would wear this back brace, which sort of was almost like a corset that would hold him upright and take pressure off his back. So instead of just slumping forward when he was shot in the back of the head, he actually sort of just slumped forward till to where the brace held him and then actually bounced him back. So thinking of the mechanics of it, like it's almost like the, uh, what you call it? Those, those uh, things that fly outside of auto, like the crazy uh, wavy, wacky crazy, waving the arm, wacky wavy thing. Yeah, did they have a name? Arm does. Yeah, it pops him back up because he was sort of on this uh, brace that kept him upright. It almost looked like he got shot in the front, in the back of the head, and then in the front of that. So that's why his head moves so weirdly, and his body doesn't move as someone who you think would just get hit, shot in the back of the head and just slump forward. So that was causing a ton, like there's a ton of factors in this case that weren't known to the public at the time and just caused tons and tons of misinformation and hearsay and no one really knew what was going on. So 
those are the kind of things that bred a lot of these conspiracies, especially when it came to that film. I was, I was just looking at the assassination. That's a hell of a shot, dog. But it was moving in in a car. There was like four, 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 six, six, four other people in a car. Four other people in a car. Why yeah. did why did why did his wife? I guess I mean shit. You said she wants to get the hell out of it. So she, he got shot, and she she bolts out the back. And then there was a dude standing on the back of the car, keeping her in. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. It was a. Uh, there there have been some people that dispute whether or not it's possible to get all three of those shots off using that rifle. To uh, I guess I, I I'm not a. I'm not a firearm enthusiast, but you have you have to fire. Then you have there's an action that you have to do to chamber the next round, and then you have to aim fire again. It is possible. I've seen people do it on like MythBusters and shit. Yeah. Um, so it's possible to do it. And if you're a trained marksman, I guess I guess you can. But it's still like it's it was tough to pull off if it was Lee Harvey Oswald that was doing it. So the the theory about the Secret Sur- Service agent was, and this is true. There was a driver that was behind John F. Kennedy. There was a car that was filled with Secret Service agents. They had an AR-15. One of the Secret Service agents uh, pulled the gun out, turned, put the safety off, and then the car sped up as he was trying to find his target. And they're saying that's the shot that, uh, that hit his head and caused a devastating injury where his head was, was pretty much blown off. Are you sure it was an AR-15? Yeah, it was an AR-15. Wasn't it? One, I mean, the trajectories is what Billy was talking about. I don't know shit about guns like that, but... He he bucks backwards. Wouldn't that indicate that the force is coming from his front? Right. So since he was wearing that corset type, you know, back brace, when he got shot in the back of the head, he went forward, but his brace caught him, and then he went backwards, like because it was like a, like it was like if you hit something and bounce backwards. Billy wanted to use the, the wacky, flatable, arm-flailing guy from a car sale again. That's probably the first time that yeah, analogy has ever been know. used to describe it the was assassination. Keeping, it was, something was keeping him up. I don't know, man. The impact, the impact, there's literally, like, spread from the front. So it's not like, it's the, but it's not like it comes out and spreads. It's like impact spread. You know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not a fucking... Yeah. Well, the thing about, I, I, the thing about, <laughs> but that just, about gunshots is sometimes, actually frequently, the exit wound is way more devastating than the entry wound. So as it goes out the back... Because the first shot actually... The, when you see his head explode, that's the second shot. The one that killed oh, him. He got, shot, he got shot twice in the head? Yeah, the first one was in his... like It went through his neck, kind of. And actually, you can't see it in the video. Well, is that the... Didn't they find a bullet that very clearly didn't go through anybody? Well, it hit like, the... Or- it hit the congressman, right? So the, the governor. So the, yeah. that's the magic bullet theory. So the shot comes down, enters in in his upper back, and actually ricochets, comes out his neck, goes into the person who's sitting in front of him, Conley, hits his right armpit, breaks his rib, hits his wrist, which is right in front of his wrist, then deflects down and hits, him, hits that other guy in the thigh. So look. So Connolly yeah. had three entry and exit wounds: one in his rib, one in his wrist, and then one in his so, leg from the bullet that came through Kennedy's neck. So, but look, that's one they found that had no, like it was still intact. They found a bullet that was completely intact. Did they not? Yeah, they found they found a, a cartridge that was relatively like clean. That I don't know if that was the the magic bullet one, or if that was the second one that just took his head off. So guys, when I send you this video, he got shot. Just send me the link to Ravel's tweet. Yeah. He well, got- that was what I wanted to talk about too. That, he didn't even tweet it this year. Yeah, I checked. I just- oh, what so does the he first- usually yeah. tweet? Because you guys kept saying that. I didn't know what you were referring to. Real quick, Billy, Billy. So, so the first shot, because like, when you look at the video, like he's kind of like grimacing. It looks like he's like yeah, fixing that's, something that's with his chest. He got- so he had already been shot. And yeah. then his wife- Says it's like yo, looking like yo, what the fuck's going on with you? But didn't look that concerned. And then the second one, he got popped yeah, in the that's, head. That's okay, confused okay. a lot of people okay. because so okay. like if you're looking at the shot, I think he gets shot on it. You see a number of frames. I think he gets shot on two twenty six or two twenty seven the first time, and then that's mm-hmm. why because he's, he's holding himself, he's like he's like oh like and he didn't then, know what's going on. Then so like that's actually much more plausible from. Sh- 
from frame 226. And then the second shot hits to uh, watch this real time. Oh, Jesus. 315 is the second is when he's is the second shot hits him. And there might even be a shot in between. So, I mean, that isn't too, especially if you're practicing as a sniper, like for this moment, like reloading as fast as you can while the car is moving. So that, that's what, that's what a lot of people don't understand. They think that both shots come when the second shot hits. But so it's the first shot. Yeah, the first shot he, he stuns waves. him. So, oh, so it's it's like right after he passes the sign. So if you're looking at like so yeah yeah, yeah. Like, so like so like almost I think the shot was like while the sign was in the way of the camera. Yep. Yeah, and then, it was like right after okay. the sign hit. Yeah, okay. And as soon as as soon as he passes the sign, he's like, oh shit, I got popped. And the shorty goes to console him, and then, bam. Yeah. Scrambled. And then they, they take him to the hospital. They take him to Parkland Hospital in Dallas. And by the way, if you go to Dealey Plaza, there's they have an X um, on the ground, like where it happened. That people like that's go so by. That's so fucking odd. That's people so take, very like, morbid. Selfies. And then the second one, the second one is the, the exit wound, which is larger. The exit wound is always larger than the entry wound. Like that's a known yeah. thing. Just... Yeah, that's why it looks like okay. he's getting shot from the front. And then, then they take him to the hospital, and they try to save him at the hospital, but obviously, like, sir, you don't have a head any longer. So he, he had a, a pulse when he got there, didn't have any blood pressure. Um, one of the doctors that was attending on him has said that in the later pictures that they saw um, after the aut autopsy was performed, that they covered up some of the wounds that he saw when he was there. But that's just one guy who is one of a team of probably like 10 or 12 people that was working on him. So I, I'd be more likely to throw that one out and be like, okay, it's possible that one person, a 30 year old doctor, when they're operating on the president of the United States, they probably, one of those guys might misremember what was happening. Like some of the finer details in that moment, especially if everybody else in the room thinks it went one way. But um, the, the crazy part is after he passes away at the hospital, when he's declared dead, by Texas state law, you have to do an autopsy in the state of Texas before somebody is moved out of the state. The Secret Service surrounds his body, loads it up into a coffin, and they just say, fuck that, we're not letting, it, we're not letting his autopsy take place here. And they pushed him out of the hospital, would not let the coroner do an autopsy in that hospital. Instead, they loaded his shit back onto Air Force One and and flew him home right at that point and that's when lbj took the oath of office on that air force one ride but Damn. It, it, i had never seen a video until now like i mean oh, really? kind of this, yeah i would never really i looked at it from that the vantage point of it you know you know he got shot but i was never like hmm how did he get just me looking at it right now it's just like wow that makes sense yeah, yeah. i i haven't actually looked at it that intensely till this morning i don't like watching it i i don't like either like you like some you've seen the clip of his head but I never saw the f the time he first, first got shot. shot. The first shot that in his neck. Changes. Yeah, that's that's that yeah. blew my mind actually. Yeah. Okay, now is this might be my favorite part to talk about when it comes to the the JFK assassination. <laughs> Not the Zapruder film. I hate watching that shit. All right, right. But the allegations of certain people in our government that may or may not have been involved in it. Well, yeah. Let me. There's a question that kind of binds both of these. So, like, we were talking about. Biden and all the presidents pushing back this report, this information. Doesn't that lead you to believe that it wasn't Oswald? Like, why would they push it back if it confirmed that? I, I don't know. So, That's a good question. It's like many things with the government. I'm always like, why are what, like when there's always shit redacted? And I'm like, if even if it's like they're like, OK, this will fuck things up or lead to more conspiracy. It's like the I, for me transparency is always the best because it it at least at the end of the day you have that in your pocket like you can think what you want to think but we're transparent about it you just lead so many it, it, it's so many tentacles you give it so many tentacles if 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 you're just like well we redacted this because of this. And you know it's just it's too shaky and it's you already have a distrusting public so transparency i feel like is the best unless there's some shit in there that you know, so I, 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 I have I have a couple. <laughs> There's nothing in the report that was like, yeah, Lee didn't do it. 
We know who it was. Yeah. It's this guy. He yeah. lives in Montana. Well, well the thing is, <laughs> you know, there could be a con- like a conspiracy of not a conspiracy of not of action, but of inaction. So think about like, uh, I-, I wish I could give a little more background before proposing this, but I sort of have an idea that let's say someone in the government wanted to kill him. Let's just say if you're in charge of protecting the president and locating threats to the president and, you know, making sure they don't actually get to him. And if you're the U.S. president, there's probably a lot. Mm-hmm. It would actually be more likely that they knew it was going to happen and let it happen rather than conduct it themselves. Right. That makes sense, actually. That's, I, like I mean, that. that's, well, that was. That's one of the theory, like nine eleven theories, no? Like they and knew Pearl, and they just let it happen. Yeah, that yeah. There's some theories that various like overseas intelligence agencies had a heads up on it. They didn't right. do anything to stop it because they wanted the United States to get attacked and then to you know engage in like an all out war on terror. Right. So that's yeah, a conspiracy of inaction. That's good, Billy. I, yeah. I think that like that's there's definitely something that could be there with that. Um, you know, just sunny me like that, though. That was good. I'm proud of him. I'm proud of Billy. I like to. I like to give Billy positive reinforcement every now and again. I like it. I, I like it. It's good, Billy. It's good. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree that that a conspiracy of of inaction would actually make so, more sense of why they would hide it. So Oswald was well known to a bunch of people. And then there's another idea that maybe Oswald was a double agent because they knew of Oswald. Oswald was in Russia. Back into the U.S. I'm even surprised the Russians didn't think he was working for the U.S. I mean, he had all the earmarks of someone who should be checked on. Like, if we get into his background, uh, he was sort of had schizoid, they say, uh, tendencies, um, troubled child, bad stuff happened to him in the military. He tried to, he shot himself by accident, decent sharpshooter defected to the Soviet Union, wanted to become a Soviet national, uh, ended up coming back because he did not like that he could make money there, but there was nowhere to spend it. His quotes exactly from his journal, if it was really him, uh, saying there's no bowling alleys, there's no nightclubs, there's nothing to do here. Um, And, you know, but there's a lot of supporters of Oswald, like several of his wives were like, he could have never done this. But several of his wives. Oh, he has two. One one Russian <laughs> wife. He like one girl he like married in Russia, and then one that he had back in the states. Um, both of which don't think he was capable at all of doing this. It's another back to back wives. Uh, Area clip. codes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there were, I I could see if we're talking about the documents that that have been redacted or withheld and reasons to not put them out. The government can come up with any reason, however tangential it might be, to be like, yeah, we can't release this information because, like, for example, when he was working on the U-2 spy plane overseas, that was, like, top, top, top secret for the United States government. They, they might not want our adversaries to know, okay, this is, how, this is how many people we station at each base when we have a really top secret thing that we're trying to keep under wraps like we there's all sorts of information that we, we might not want to get out there there's like a lot of small stuff that they could make a claim mm. is is putting national security in jeopardy in in some weird way but yeah they should they should release the files i want to read all the files related to this most specifically i want to know more about what george hw bush was doing around the time of the kennedy assassination and you you might think i sound crazy to say this but george hw bush Claims that he doesn't remember where he was during the assassination when he found out about the murder of John F. Kennedy. That seems like the wrong answer. It's th- definitely the wrong Even answer. Even if you don't actually don't remember, you make something up. Yeah. I mean, you sure, figure it certainly out. Certainly don't say that. How can, how can you not remember where you were during the assassination of John F. Kennedy? And there's a lot of stuff. I, I recommend everybody out there reads the book Family of Secrets by Russ Baker about uh, the involvement that george hw bush had in the cia which isn't that's not a secret i mean he he was the head of the cia so i imagine you have to crack a few eggs to reach that position that seems like one they they just don't give out to anybody but uh yeah he he claims that he doesn't remember where he was on november 22nd 1963 and this is where it gets a little interesting his um his roommate 
when he was at the Phillips Academy was the nephew of a guy named George de Morenschild. I'm pretty sure I'm butchering the pronunciation of that last name. Um, so his roommate's uncle was George de Morenschild. Now, George de Morenschild was also a friend of Lee Harvey Oswald. That's a crazy coincidence. In fact, they were such close friends that like three days after George de Morenschild died, his wife took to the United States government a picture that he had of Lee Harvey Oswald in their backyard holding the rifle that killed John F. Kennedy. Oh, shit. Oh, also. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's, that's a crazy coincidence. <laughs> that's, that's wild. <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, there was another shooting or, uh, three weeks earlier before JFK got shot of a general in Dallas, who is a segregationist, sort of cons- very conservative, anti-communist individual who also got pot up, as they say, a pot shot at him with a similar situation. And they think uh, Oswald might have been behind that one as well. And let me pull up that exact. Uh, so he could have been just sort of a D.C. sniper type scenario where he was taking shots all all around town. Just waiting but let me find that exact um also ted cruz's dad might have been there we don't know (laughs) we don't know anything about that i i was unable to dig up any any concrete examples of no i would yo that might be the funniest thing in political history dog um it's so random like i would love for 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 trump to double back down it might happen though, because Trump's definitely going to rerun in 2024, and I think Cruz is going to take a shot at it too. So I hope he he pulls out the big guns in the. Or do you think do you think the Republicans, Big T, you can answer this? Do you think if Trump r- runs again, that the Repu- he'll have any challenge in the Republican Party? Um. Yeah, I do think he would actually. I think it'd be like John Kasich again. He'd he'd be like, I'm there's no way. I'm, I'm gonna DeSantis run as I'm gonna run to... as a moderate, and then Trump is gonna take a shit all over him, and Kasich is gonna get beat by like fifty points. I think DeSantis wants to be president. I think yeah. I think it's Ted Cruz for sure. Ted Cruz would absolutely run against him. He'd have no chance, but he just wants to no chance. Him. Sure, sure. But I would love to see those debates. Uh, Ted that Cruz would be, is too much of a meme. But I think. I think DeSantis would probably end up like if Trump was like, be my vice president, I think he'd do it. Oh, for sure. I don't think anybody wants to get in the mud with Donald Trump and the Republican Party. Right. Especially if you're like young like that and you have a future. Probably. There's yeah, he, he he's low key is the Republican Party right now, which is wild. This is going to be grim, but I don't think there's a single person who is capable of defeating trump on a stage just using words not like talking <laughs> points not i think like, here's what i'm actually going to do no i like, agree there's not a single person outside of dave dave's the only one go. who uh dave el prez dave portnoy he's the only one oh who the would owner go of toe-to-toe with trump and hold his own every other like ted cruz like fucking was like <laughs> trump was insulting his wife and he was like thank you like the, no one else, like and you gotta at least swing on them, do something. Otherwise, like no one's gonna ever want to vote for you, and no one should. But in terms of just actually holding your own up there, like DeSantis can't do it. Fucking uh, Cruz, sir, we know can't do it. Kasich can't do it. Like you have to be someone who's also just going to say the craziest thing that comes to your mind, and that's comfortably, Dave. So, uh, General Walker. Uh, Edwin Walker was there was an attempted assassination attempt uh, about three weeks before um, uh, JFK's assassination, and there was no leads on this case until the JFK uh, got shot. And they're like, "This was very similar to something that happened three weeks earlier." And um, Marina Oswald testified that her husband had told her that he traveled by bus to General Walker's house and shot at Walker with his rifle. She said that Oswald considered Walker to be a leader of a fascist organization. So this, I mean, I'm going to be honest, the more I looked into this, because I heard more of the conspiracies before looking into this than the fact, I think Oswald kind of definitely did it. I don't know 
who he was involved with, but I think he 100% did it. Well, isn't the whole thing that, like, yeah, he did it, but the motives slash strategy are what the actual conspiracy is? Right. So looking at his international travel, there were some uh, reports that he was in Mexico at the yes, Soviet I, embassy. This is what I was going to ask you. Mm. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So him sort of, uh, and the thing is, this is where the discrepancies lie. Some people say that Oswald spoke perfect Russian, while other people said that he spoke terrible Russian. So, you know, who knows at the time he may have been better at Russian at one point and good at another, or some people think that it's the more rational uh, explanation that he was bad at Russian when he was drunk, and in Mexico he may have been you know, drinking tequila or something at the, um, you know, uh, Soviet embassy. So all sorts of stuff. But we do know that he was the only member of the friendly Cuban organization, the Fair Treatment of Cuba organization. He was definitely a very left leftist in the idea that he didn't like how things were being done in America. And there was also reports that he attempted suicide in the Soviet Union, but was stopped. There was a lot going on with this guy. But who knows if this was all him or, you know, he was sort of a sleeper agent that was being manipulated. Which could so there was, this, there was this dude um, who's been, I don't know if you ran across this while you were looking at it, but a dude by the name of Dave Perry. Mm -hmm. So So Dave Perry has kind of been like, obsessed and fascinated with this shit for since 17, uh, 1976. So he's been kind of like researching this shit. And that's just one of the things that he was saying. He was saying that we we definitely know he was in Mexico talking to Russians and they even know who he talked to. They just don't know what was talked about. Um, and the 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 recent release of, of the JFK files, like they weren't um, very substantive. Um, they still have shit that they're covering up and he thinks that what was talked about in Mexico is part of it. Um, mm -hmm. And also they, he said that um, uh, the CIA received an, an assassination warning in 1962 that uh, the Polish that guy in Australia. Yeah. yeah. So go ahead. So there was a Polish uh, limousine driver who was driving Russian nationals around Australia who reported that, the Russians had put an $100,000 bounty on Kennedy and basically just distributed that out towards all their networks. Like, if anyone can kill Kennedy, he's got a $100,000 bounty. That's kind of a light bounty for the president. You're going to have to come up with <laughs> a little what, bit more than $100,000. Back then, back then it's probably what, like, it's like, like 500 maybe? Still not enough to kill the, the president. The thing is... That's like, disrespectful, honestly. The thing is, hitmen... These mems? Hitmen, like, don't... I feel like hitmen are actually very viable because if they're choosing, you don't want to live hit, lavish. Yeah, if if yeah. you are choose like if you've become a hitman, like you probably don't have any other options to make money in the first place. So like, do you, you become a hitman like at if if you're involved in assassination shit like that? Like you you become a hitman in hopes one day somebody will be like, this is the big call. You're going up to the show. It's the president. You know. I mean, I saw something like today, someone paid someone 2K to kill somebody. I would be so mad if somebody paid me $2,000 to, or if somebody paid somebody $2,000 to kill me. Like, that sounds like, like how much I do you also, cost to kill somebody? Uh, well, also, that's kind of like a get what you pay for type deal. You shouldn't want somebody who's willing to kill somebody for two grand. Exactly. Just lie to me. Add a couple of zeros onto it. Mattresses, you... flying, and hit men. Spend the money. It's worth it. That's good. I like that. Yep. Like, how much do you think like a good assassination would cost today? Mad Dog, just make sure to clip that. That big T is like, spend the money on a good hit man. <laughs> you don't want to half-ass this one. I would also. I, I would add. I sternly I... disavow <laughs> killing in all its forms. If you're don't going, clip this part. If you're going to do it. It seems like something it's like, you know, you're going to get what you pay for. I would also add porches to that. I like that. Yeah, don't underpay for a porch. I like that. So it would be basically a million dollars in today's money because there's the cum cumulative price change of $100,000 versus 
from 1963 to 2021 is 815%. That still doesn't seem like... Yeah, for the president, that's like yeah. the... A million dollars? Well, I feel like there should be no bond. Isn't that a thing? Where you can just say, like, no bond. What do you mean? They have to stay. What do you mean? What? Wait, isn't that a thing? No bond? For Where they hit- set no bond, and it's like, they're not allowed to leave. That's, no, no, that's jail. Thinking, we're it's not the other way about, about it. The same thing. We're talking about somebody paying somebody to kill. Like, oh, oh sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. We were on the other side of that conversation. Um, yeah, I think. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I think like. I mean, what? What were the the Silk Road assassination prices? I, that's oh. what I was talking about. I think like I I remember a lady paid a hitman two thousand dollars to kill her husband, and pretty good. Like, that's such an insult. Yeah, maybe it was on Black Friday. Maybe it was. <laughs> It's a great deal. Hitman deals. Three for yeah. one. <laughs> any twenty percent off. Any non-government official. Three. Well, how? $10, it, if it's if it's a hundred thousand dollars to kill the president, how much do you have to pay Jack Ruby to be the guy that kills the guy that killed the president? This is where I think the mob comes in. Yeah, I think okay. I think at that point it's getting. I think Jack Ruby washy. was a hundred percent in the mob. He's a nightclub owner. He's, nightclub owner. His name. It's a, it's a mob. The, like, the jewel. It is. It's a, t- it's, a, it's a tough name to sound innocent. Yeah, yeah it really is. It's a, great, it's a great name reference. for a rapper. His, his real name. Jack Ruby. He yeah. was basically yeah. in, he was in the Chicago uh, scene. scene. He was like a Teamster, Union guy. Like, I, would, oh, I think that that hit, it's easier to get someone to kill the man to kill the president. You don't have to go through some sort of psycho oh for sure people are probably lining up to be the guy that yeah, got right. to kill the guy that killed the president if the, you honestly believe that that lee harvey oswald like acted alone and wanted to kill john f kennedy i'm sure you could have found yeah. millions of people that would have been like yeah give me a gun i'll do it so this is where the you know the kkk conspiracy comes in where they think that the dallas police had a bunch of kkk members and they just let him in uh, Arian dropped off this call, there. but I'll just answer for him and be like, yes, they did. <laughs> they absolutely did have. Like in the, in the early 60s. Did. Yes. Yeah. In the early 60s, Dallas Police Department definitely had some KKK members in it. Yeah. Well, you know, but I don't think the KKK was involved with Lee Harvey Oswald. Yeah. I, I don't know if, no. like how much evidence there is out there for yeah. that. But it is weird that when they're transporting the most wanted or the highest profile criminal, one of the highest profile criminals in the history of our country on like the one time that they have to change jails for him, he just gets shot in a basement where everybody knew that he would, he would be walking. You would think that security would have been like a little bit tighter there. Uh, Verbal meme. It's the guy that's standing outside the stadium, just not even touching people, letting them in. That's what the Dallas Police Department was doing to let people into that tunnel. Well, they say it was because of all the media members. Notice how, like, all of this is so well documented for that back then? Well, the people that are in the police department, in that Dallas Police Department, they knew Jack Ruby. Yeah. Because right after he fires a shot, you hear somebody that's in that entourage go, Jack, you son of a bitch. (laughs) Like, Like, oh, that's Rascal Jack. Pulled, it, pulled yeah. it off on us again. It's like Barney Stinson. <laughs> yeah, they, they knew who the guy was. Like, they, they were on first-name basis with Jack Ruby. Jeez. Yeah, so, I mean, in a perfect world where we, you know, believe everything's fine and dandy, Lee Harvey Oswald was just a crazy communist sympathizer who shot JFK, and Jack Ruby was just a crazy nightclub owner who, in a fit of rage over his beloved president, shot Lee Harvey Oswald. That's boring. Well, like, could could the Jack Ruby thing be spun like the Teamsters did have Kennedy taken care of, but they wanted it to seem like they were big Kennedy guys, so then they took care of the guy that they hired in the first place. Ah, could be. Ruby was addicted to uh, prescription meth of the day. Love that. Yeah. What was prescription meth used for? Phenmetrazine. My grandma was given prescription meth. Really? Yeah. How'd, how'd that go? It was after, uh, yeah, like they were just handing it out. But like what, what, what sickness do you have that prescription meth is the cure? Uh, A lot of things? Post-pregnancy. Wanting meth? Wanting meth. <laughs> <laughs> Takes the edge right Wait. off. <laughs> Wait, post, like postpartum? She was getting meth? 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know the exact story. I'm probably butchering it, but it was something <laughs> having to do like she just had a kid, and and so like here's your meth. And it was also like the babies keep me up all night. So here's your meth. Yeah. Damn. I feel like that'd be more of a cocaine thing. Like stay up, stay awake. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know what meth actually does to you. Prescription or non-prescription. So, so right. wh- where where do we stand on Jack Ruby as a team? Um, he- because it. I don't think that you can believe that, like, Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone and then also Jack Ruby acted alone. No, I think there was some connection. I think Lee Harvey Oswald was hired. Wait. Also, this is in the They were early both hired days. by different people. I do also have a theory that this sort of crazed actions, like, because all this stuff was the first time media was sort of widespread, you know what I'm saying? Like, everyone knew about what had happened. Everyone saw the visuals around what had happened. I don't think the Zapruder film was broadcast. Zapruder. But <laughs> you could have just had a, a, a case of just, like, people dealing with media for the first time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I feel like if that was the case, we st- like, if that was just the case, we still wouldn't be talking about it, like, today, 50 years later. It was also way easier to get away with conspiracies back then, I think, than it is today. Yeah, it's like the thing with, like, DNA. It's like, if you, you just had to get away. Yeah. You just don't leave a paper trail. Don't write a memo. <laughs> and there's actually no one. The entire but world was that chat. Craziest, <laughs> craziest thing. Ruby died a month later. He never saw a trial either. What yeah. did he die of? Uh, embolism. Lung. Maybe from all the guilt that just overtook him. Or the meth. Or the meth. Yeah, it could have been the meth too. Uh, Billy, do you have any more facts about this or should we reach our conclusion? Dude, I have so many more facts. We actually haven't gone through any. All right, of give me two more facts. Oh, okay, let me find. Um, Billy put in our group chat today that today's episode was at least going to be four plus hours. I was gonna I was gonna go through every single conspiracy. Be- okay, so Cubans or Russians in response for CIA assassination attempts. Lyndon B. Johnson, military industrial complex, angry that Kennedy wanted to scale back the war, um, and all that. And then the mob stuff. Jimmy Hoffa was involved. Jimmy Hoffa hated. Kennedys, but also we, we didn't even talk about Bobby Kennedy getting shot. Mm-hmm. So well, the Kennedy curse is a whole episode we could do on its own. I know with like Rosemary Kennedy getting the lobotomy. Yeah, like you can do a whole episode on the Kennedy family aside, the, and not even mention JFK. The eldest brother died in an experimental, uh, like drug trial. No experimental bomber mission. They were trying to make drones for the first time. They're basically trying to make like kamikaze like. B twenty two uh B twenty nines. Basically just like filled up a giant bomber with dynamite and crashed him into German bunkers. But uh the fur it was it John? No, wait. Not John. Joe. Joe Kennedy, mm-hmm. the eldest son named after Joe uh J- JFK's father, died, he blew up in the bomber. He never made it out. Yeah, he was supposed to jump real. out and parachute. Right. But did he not jump out? No, he didn't make it. But that's even sketchy in itself. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, a little bit. Uh, nigga, just, nigga just fell asleep at the wheel. I, I feel like Mad Dog's being awfully quiet about Taylor Swift's involvement. With I the was cannon. just going to mention that, actually. Yeah. Convenient. I'm, I'm out the loop. Put me on. Taylor Swift dated um, a Kennedy. Connor Kennedy, I believe, was his name. Hold on. Taylor Swift. Okay. Yeah, so she, yeah, Connor Kennedy dated in the summer of 2012 ahead of her fan favorite album, Red, which is the one that just got re recorded that I was shouting out at the live show. Um, Wrongly. No. And so basically, people, people are clamoring they're wrong about how Taylor Swift dated Connor Kennedy when he was 17 and she was 23. No. He was 18 and she was 22. I'm not saying that uh, he was le- he was legal. Look, I'm 22. Would I date an 18 year 18 year old right now? No, but it was legal, and people are saying, "Ma ma 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 ma." People like people are mad because they're not Taylor Swift and they can't date a hot Kennedy at 18 years old. I think I don't know, man. If 18, like if they were if they was together while he, while she was 18, then. The odds are they were talking while she was 17, right? No, 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 no. no. She was he, praying yeah, on him. She, okay, praying. Oh, she was, pray, oh, she was pray, praying on him. Praying, yeah. whoa. Praying is a hard and 
fast term to bring into this. Also, okay, grooming. How about grooming? Were, no. <laughs> were they gro- were, was she grooming him at, at 17? No. No, they only dated. It was like a summer fling. Like it was I'm talking quick... about. So they didn't have, they didn't have any conversations when she was when he when he was Dude, 17. They, they only fucked had... when it was hot outside. It's totally cool. They may have not even. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean gotten even? No, they like. Did she write a song about him? I don't think so. Like he was like people. If she wrote a song about an eighteen year old boy, like for how he treated her, no. then I'd be like, that's fucked up. Because eighteen year old boys are, as someone who is only a little f- past that. Tell her, yeah, tell us about eighteen year old boys, Billy. Yeah, they're literal idiots. Um, Agreed. Yeah. So yeah. the I remember when you were eighteen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The song You've grown so much since then, though. I have. The song that Taylor Swift wrote about T- Connor Kennedy, allegedly, um, if you're a Taylor Swift fan, is Begin Again, which is notably a very, very not breakup song. It's like I felt like this was after Jake Gyllenhaal, who was All Too Well was written about. This is like you were the person that I let in again after a very bad breakup. So Begin Again is not like a fuck you song at all. Begin mm-hmm. Again is a very... If anything, very nice song towards Counter Kennedy. And I mean. So hold on. I just want to make sure I'm following right. Okay. She got out of a, a, a toxic relationship with an adult. Yes. And then she started dating an 18 year old. Like, was, robbed, I can robbed the cradle. Well, this so was like, this was like, um, this might have been a year and a half later. So it wasn't like a rebound. So it sounds like no, she's being she's going out of her way to be extradited. The only person that she's been extra extra nice to Not after the- they've broken up is mm-hmm. the guy that maybe has some blackmail on her because he knows that he was seventeen. No, no the only one from a more powerful family than her. Mm-hmm. No, no, I just think it's interesting. No, it, very it's, interesting. Hold the freaking phone. If you t- if you guys were given the opportunity to date an extremely attractive Kennedy, don't act like you wouldn't do it. There's such a thing. I, Connor, I date people Con- based on character, character and merit. Connor- Maddie, I'm not worried about their fucking status in society. Connor Kennedy. Okay. Well, Connor Kennedy was no. Better. I'm gonna send you guys a picture. Connor I'm, Kennedy was no, like notably, he is a very cute boy. I don't. Or what? Like was I don't when think he was the Kennedy women. I'm just saying, if there was a, a very attractive Kennedy woman, you wouldn't be like, oh, no way. I don't think I'd like to date a Kennedy. Based on everything that we learned today, uh, absolutely uh, count me out on that. They, they were a summer, they were a summer fling. I remember this. I was thirteen when this happened. I remember. That nigga does not. This is a goofy looking dude. It he's is not, not goofy. He's cute. He's actually hey, goofy as hell, bro. He looks like a teen, like a teen. He was eighteen. Teen. Sent me a dork. You sent me a dork. He's cute, but the whole thing is that from everything I've heard, so he's the grandson of. RFK. Uh, Bob, Bobby. Yeah. So I don't know who his dad is, honestly. But I'm not, I'm not like a huge Kennedy follower, so I don't know everything about them. But I begin again. If you're going to have any Taylor Swift, Swift song written about you after you break up and it's begin again, you are in a lucky, lucky boat. Because... Madeline, did you read the headline from the picture that you sent us? What did Taylor that? Swift's Kennedy obsession cause split? Connor, quote, freaked out as singer came on too strong. Mm. Mm. She was pushing a little bit. So what? Mm. So what if she was excited? I think we should cancel her. No, we're not canceling her. I think Taylor she's Swift. into young dudes. I think it's not appropriate. No. Yeah, Joe, her, the, Joe Allen. She is, groomed him. No, she, she, groomed she him. didn't. He's like Drake. <laughs> yeah. She, All right, before Mad Dog gets too down her Taylor Swift rabbit hole, because I'm sure that will lead to a longer conversation, uh, Big T, you want to talk to us about one of our favorite sponsors? Absolutely. Black Rifle Coffee Company. Uh, they're our favorite coffee here at Barstool. Black Rifle is a veteran-owned coffee company serving premium coffee to people who love America. Veteran CEO and founder Evan Hafer spent over seven years on the ground overseas with U.S. Special Forces as a CIA contractor. Evan even modified his gun trucks during the invasion of Iraq to grind coffee anywhere. Black Rifle is continually committed to supporting veteran law enforcement and first responder causes. In 2020, Black Rifle donated more than 6 million cups of coffee to deployed soldiers, law enforcement, and medical workers through their signature Buy a Bag, Give a Bag initiatives. Black Rifle imports its high-quality coffee beans from all over the world and roasts five days a week at their facilities in Manchester, Tennessee, and Salt Lake City, Utah. 
The team at Black Rifle Coffee is continually researching and experimenting with new roasting methods and coffee origins. The best way to enjoy Black Rifle is by joining the coffee club. You pick your perfect roast, how much you want, and when you want it delivered to your door. They take care of the rest. It's super easy, free to sign up, and you get free shipping, discounts on partner brands, and early access to new products and club exclusives. Go to blackriflecoffee.com slash dose and use the code dose, D-O-S-E, today and get the freshest coffee in America shipped right to you. Yeah. Uh, and Pred- obvious predatory behavior. Obvious. No. Insiders say Taylor freaked the 18-year-old out by coming on too strong because of her apparent obsession with his famous family. Okay. Wow. And she was, I'm, wow. I'm, was I'm not about here. chasing the Kennedy. I'm not here. I'm not here to answer every single question. I was not there. I was not part of it. It's just weird to write a song about a 17 year old. She was. He was. He was 18. He was 18. And no, it's. I mean, a lot of artists do that. Not only Drake, Neil Diamond, Sweet Caroline was about a Kennedy, right? I believe Sweet Caroline Caroline was about a 14 year old. Okay. Yeah. Well, Connor was not 14. I'm just saying. At one point, he was. Yeah. So, so <laughs> he was never fourteen. <laughs> so what's Jake Gyllenhaal? That's no, not the point. I, I only bring that up to say that, like, just because the song is about a young Kennedy, doesn't mean that it's not going to be played for years and years to come. Yeah, but, Begin Again. I just listened to Begin. No the, pun uh, intended. Begin Again is a great song. <laughs> Watched it. Begin Again. They were in a cafe. It was awesome. But a uh, summer flame. Year olds don't know anything about cafes. No, mm. he wasn't fourteen. Did you say fourteen? I said eighteen. Oh. That was. Well, if I, feel I bet like this they... guy may have known about cafes. Yeah, if you're a Kennedy, you're knowing about cafes. Yeah, maybe. Uh, now you just said you didn't know a lot about the Kennedys. Now you're saying you know a lot about his cafe experience. No, but I'm just saying mm. I know. I mean, rich people tend to know more about cafes than the average. Sounds like Taylor Swift is. She sounds like she's just a, a fan of the Kennedy conspiracy theories too. No, you... maybe she wanted to get close to the family. That's what "Look What You Made Me Do" was about. <laughs> no, it was guys... about. It was about getting into the bootlegging industry. You guys, you guys can't put this on me. You can't. She put is. The whole she thing. is technically bootlegging her own albums right now. <laughs> I, I, maybe she just wanted the blueprint. <laughs> you guys can't put this Taylor Swift thing on me. I'm not. I am not. a Taylor Swift. You are because all of you're, you are against you're, him. You're standing in front of these uh, bullets. You're like Elon Musk fans right now. Oh, don't put me in that. <laughs> oh, by, by the way, uh, a Probably second, worse. a second guy also died the day JFK got shot. He was a, a cop who was the first that first person to indicate that Oswald was the killer and his name was Tit wait wasn't it the Tibbets, tri- right? Tippet yeah Tippet yeah yeah I just a, a random lyric here from Look What You Made Me Do. No, that's a different <laughs> song. I don't like your perfect crime. How you laugh when you lie. You said the gun Ooh. was mine. Isn't mm. cool. Reputation. No, okay, wow. that whole album, Whoa. the whole reputation. Wow. Wait, guys, Wait. guys, Whoa. guys, Whoa. guys. No. Whoa. <laughs> the whole reputation Ooh. album. Taylor Swift. Look what you made John me do. <laughs> Look what you made me do. Okay. Wait. Look what you just made me do. Look what you the, just made me do. Whole- that sounds like it's written from the perspective of a patsy who had yeah. their mind controlled by somebody else and made them do something with a gun. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? <laughs> At all? I bet they I think I think Taylor Swift is a big conspiracy theory JFK buff. She is a conspiracy theory in herself. Herself is a conspiracy theory. All of her or her Easter eggs and all of her little her little hints. No, look what you maybe do. Reputation the reputation I, album is notably is notably like a made up like um, sci-fi fanfic. Taylor Swift is it's secretly, Taylor Swift sci-fi era. Is is secretly Lee Harvey Oswald's no. <laughs> daughter or granddaughter mm-hmm. from with the Russian woman, and she went to date this Kennedy to uh, exonerate her father. She doesn't maybe. not look Russian. Yeah, she kind of mm-hmm. does look Russian. Oh, what? And she what? also was she involved in collusion porcelain. in the 2016 election. Why? Okay, Welcome explain to my that. TED talk. <laughs> no. Also, Arian, uh, uh, Connor Kennedy is now dating Dame Dash's daughter, which is not something I expected to learn. Dame Dash is trying to get it in on the files too. Yeah, maybe Probably. Dame Dash yeah, was the hit of it. I see, but now you're le- giving credence to what yeah, we're saying. Yeah, Madeline, Taylor you just Swift. invalidated everything you've you've said. <laughs> no, I'm saying maybe Dame Ma- Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift just had a f- summer fling with this boy. She's not going to find out all the Kennedy secrets in a summer. That's what not if- how Connor was telling it. What if they took? No, Connor. I'm sure Connor. If 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 what he said was accurate about like he came on, she came on too strong. 
He's definitely not giving her the secrets. Okay, what if they kidnapped Oswald and then framed him for Tippett's murder to then make it more obvious that he did it and then they had someone else shoot JFK because they found him 45 minutes later. But why would Lee Harvey Oswald take that fall? Well, he didn't. He was just saying, I'm a patsy, I'm a patsy. What's a patsy? A patsy is someone who gets set up to do something to take the fall. Did he admit to killing J.D. Is Okay, succession reference. Is Tom Wamsgant a patsy? Tom is, a, yes. Okay. Yes, he would be a patsy. Somebody okay. that people, other people are using to take the fall okay. for something that Spoiler alert. people have done. Got it. So Oswald denied killing Tippett and JFK. Well, duh. So he, so he didn't claim patsy, or he did? He he. He right said before I'm you were shot, said I was a patsy. They're only coming after me because I lived in the Soviet Union. I just think that maybe somebody should explore the the look what you made me do, Taylor Swift Kennedy. Oh my god! Like, just pull out the thread a little bit. Wait till all the facts come out. See what happens. Oh, no. It's interesting for sure. We have the documents. What's yeah. uh, what's your what's your what's your, <laughs> what's your final what's your final conclusion on a JFK assassination? Let's go let's do a round. Let's go let's go around the room. My final conclusion is that Lee Harvey Oswald fired the gun. Killed JFK, but he was put up to it by people who we still don't know. My mm. best guess would be a combination of the Cubans and the Mafia. That's my best. And then there may have been a conspiracy of omission. What was your term, Billy? Inaction. Inaction. Conspiracy of inaction that was prevalent in some circle of the government, whether it's the CIA that allowed it to happen. That's what I honestly think happened. I think really? I think it was radicalization of Lee Harvey Oswald because he was involved in multiple super communist groups at the time and he was the perfect person to frame pushing him to do it and then inaction and collaboration between the CIA and the mob to ensure the CIA wasn't shut down, and uh, the Lyndon B. Johnson military industrial complex, Vietnam kept going, and all that. And, you know, the Cold War kept going. Big T? Um, I definitely think it was him, and I think it was mostly an idea of his own, but you said earlier, um, like you said, the Cubans, and also we went over the Russia thing. Like, I think he could have been radicalized and something like that and possibly even been encouraged by one or both of those governments uh, but as far as like you know the cia and lbj had him killed uh, i don't i don't buy into any of that. that that's the only conspiracy i believe i kind of like after reading all this stuff i can totally see oswald just it actually all being what it was unless call it what you got yeah I think you could paint it very easily that at that point in time, depending on your perspective, JFK was the most dangerous man alive. The, we talk about his popularity. We view that as a good thing. There were people who definitely viewed that as a bad thing. Being that popular, having that much control over the American people, especially when certain other people in the government did want to go to war, did want to stay in Vietnam, stuff like that. I do think LBJ was behind it, uh, and and uh, it's a more tangled web than we were able to to spin, uh, unspin today. I do think LBJ was behind it. All right, Aaron, what do you think? Um, I remain agnostic about it. I think there's still things unknown. I think there's definitely loose ends that have not been tied up. I'm not convinced he acted alone. I think he shot him. For sure, um, but I don't. I don't think that it was all under his own doing. I think he might have been working with somebody else, paid off, even radicalized. I'm not. I'm not opposed to that idea either. But I don't think it was just him waking up one day like, "Yo, I can't stand this dude," and I'm finna off him. Mm-hmm. Um, That'd be yeah. the best. Like that would probably be the most infuriating thing. Yeah, just some guy was just like, "Yeah, fuck that." I don't like the way he was looking. Yeah, <laughs> she looked at me funny last time he passed through Dallas. Yeah. So I told myself next time he come through, 
bang, bang. There's also you know, a whole side of JFK we didn't touch at all, where he was like constantly having sex with Marilyn Monroe, like that side of JFK. Very well could have pissed off many of the wrong people throughout just his course of life. Well, I think she was killed because she was having sex with JFK. I don't know if he was killed because he was having sex with her. For sure, yeah. I mean, I, I, I see what you're saying, but I'm, I'm more trying to say, like, the, the lifestyle he led off camera could have put him around some seedier oh, characters yeah. than, than we've given him credit for. He's probably the most bachelor -y of the of the presidents, While having you say? a full wife and kids. Him, and, yeah. him or Clinton. Clinton. Yeah, Clinton. Like, Benjamin uh, listen, Harrison. I'm, I'll, I'll go on the record and say there isn't one president that has been faithful. You're fuck no. I'm not buying any of that shit. One president. Not a, wait, wait. Don't say it is one. Yet. Not a one. All right, that's a good point. Arian just brought up, and I want to talk about which presidents have been faithful and which ones haven't. So stay tuned. That's what we call a tease in the biz. This conversation is going to be brought to you by Credit Karma. So stick around because after I think that we all have some opinions on who is laying pipe in the White House. Uh, it's brought to you by Credit Karma. If you feel overwhelmed when it comes to handling your personal finances, you're not the only one. Credit Karma is here to help you make those big calls with more confidence. Billy, I know Billy's concerned about his lack of credit. Billy, maybe you might want to make a call over to our friends at Credit Karma. If you're going to make a big change, if you're thinking about home renovations, paying down credit card bills, if you're thinking about getting a new apartment, buying a house, Credit Karma can help you find a loan that works for you. If you're feeling frustrated after getting rejected for a credit card or a personal loan, it happens way too often. That's why Credit Karma is changing the way people find and apply for cards and for loans. If you're refinancing your credit card debt or if you're paying for an upcoming expense, Credit Karma uses your credit data to show you fresh personal loan offers that are personalized to you. It's completely free, easy to sign up for an account at Credit Karma with no effect on your credit score, making it simple to search for the right personal loan just for you. Credit Karma is, is even going to show you your approval odds so you can choose offers that you're more likely to get approved for and apply with more confidence. On Credit Karma, you can check out multiple loan offers side by side. Members who compare loan offers on Credit Karma save an average of 30% on interest rates. And then once you have a loan, Credit Karma helps you track your progress as you pay it off. And they even let you know if you can refinance and save. Credit Karma, apply with more confidence today. If you're ready to apply, go to creditkarma.com slash loan offers. See personalized offers with your approval odds right now. Go to creditkarma.com slash loan offers. Find the loan for you. That's creditkarma.com slash loan offers. Not, there has not been one president that has been faithful. Jimmy Carter? No, no oh, none of them. I, I like him in his <laughs> None of them. Somebody was, somebody was tickling his old balls, bro, I promise you. In office? <laughs> In office, after office, you bro. Think, what think... about before office? M I'm not, like those. Like if you're if before office, before you get notoriety, you're just like a, a mayor or a senator. I... You know, you're kind of in the public eye, kind of not. You you you're cloud ain't that much. When you're the president of the United States, it's you got on call booty. I promise you, I they guarantee. Dub, they down. You think Joe Biden's gonna? Yeah, that's what I'm pussy? saying. I guarantee Joe no Biden has absolutely been faithful. Like I don't think that guy can fuck. I don't think so, man. I, maybe not, maybe not physically, but he's emotionally cheating somehow. There's just no way, bro. There's just no yeah, does, fucking way. Does dog. smelling hair deeply count as cheating? He is a creep, though. I, I, that's the one thing. <laughs> hey, yo, that's the one thing. When like when Republicans are like creepy Joe Biden, I'd be like, yo, he's doing some creepy ass shit, though. He do be looking hella creepy, though. Yeah. I don't know. I can't call it, but I guarantee you, I don't think. There's been one president that's been faithful, bro. This mm. just can't, can't. You can't. Waves, waves of it thrown at you every single day. Waves of it. You're just, you can't say no that much. FDR. It, it would be a whole thing. I'm telling you. I'm I actually, telling yeah, you, man. He, he, he was in a wheelchair. You that don't matter. You don't think it. That's ableist still, of you, Billy. Yeah, that was kind of. How, how? What would the incel crowd yeah, yeah, feel mm. of you? FDR was probably just going down on chicks left harder, and right. It's harder to get away with it. <laughs> Had him lined up. I don't think so, moving man. One to another. Then he have you to have to get present. Do you have <laughs> you have like secret getaways in every place that you go? Like you don't think you can hit somebody and be like, "Yo, set me up with a baddie at 
you know, whenever. And it'd be like, okay, president, you have a, a, a showing today. So you go talk to whatever. And then you have a look. Come on, man. Nah, I'm not buying see, it. But like, who's, who's their like guy to set that up? There's a guy. Chief of staff. Secret service. Whoever they want. Anyone? There's a guy. There's a guy. You have a guy? It's Everybody Hunter Biden. Guy. Hunter, Hunter right now is Hunter. the man with the Rolodex. <laughs> Jesus. If you need anything so in D.C., Hunter's got you like 30 minutes or less. So y'all think all these presidents here? Yeah. That would be fire. I bet you we could get Hunter on here talk about his art. Try it. I'm with it. <laughs> Yo, y'all think, think, think all these presidents is faithful? I think I, some of them have I think been. there have been some, yeah. James Madison. Why? Because he was short. Seems like a total verge. He had the silver tongue, though. <laughs> total verge. I Look think... at you making fun of incels, Billy. This is this is wild of you, man. I think like Jimmy Carter's wild. a good one. <laughs> yeah, I think I I can't imagine Jimmy Carter cheating. Him and what's his wife's name? Rosalind. No, you. Rosalind. I bet they were swingers. They still teach Sunday school. Yep. And Church. they build houses for houses. That doesn't mean anything. Well, no, but like they're a very they're a very like good couple. I can't imagine he <laughs> cheated on her. I, They're a very good couple, he said. I have a hard time believing Joe Biden. Maybe not now, physically. Go but watch Joe, say, Joe yeah. Biden is definitely uh, stepped Jimmy Carter out. was slinging it. He was getting some cake somewhere, bro. What about, you think Obama was was <laughs> dipping in some strange? Yeah? Or oh, way too smooth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was. He's like the oh, closest yeah. we've seen in like charisma since Kennedy. In my I opinion, know, at least. Like... No, he had more swag. He has, he had more I, you swag. Know, I'm not saying like it was what? one way or the other. And I, gotcha. I mean, I think we could do gotcha. a whole episode on Kennedy's, like what he was really about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, Barry O, yeah, there are people has... who don't even think him and Michelle are really married. So I don't even know if you could call that cheating. They, I, I mean, I, I, don't, I can't speak to that, but he's just got way too much swag to say no that much. I mean, just, and he was the way when he got into office, he's a good looking dude, right? So, even like, I mean, Bill Clinton, he just he looked like a raisin while he was in office, right? And he was still getting it under the table, literally. But <laughs> Billy, Billy O looked like a he was a he was a good looking cat when he when he was in office, that goes, and even that, even now, that goes to my point though. Clinton had so much swag that he was like a fat dude from Arkansas, and he was still just, I mean, handing it out. He had that Clinton swag, fat. When he got into office, he was a, he was a bigger boy. He's way yeah. he, had, he had that he had that booze. He was on. not he was not a small. They were. Boy. They used to always know, videotape maybe him like that rookie McDonald's. mellow face. He was yeah. Hold he, on. he was like a big he fast had that food puffy, guy. Like, like yeah, that, he was that, like puffy. That Santa. Yeah, that, that I wouldn't call that fat. Santa. That's like that's like he, puffy. He wasn't yeah. fat, but yeah, he he has lost yeah. weight for sure. Got you, got you. But yeah, yeah I mean, he's not, he's not what I would consider like a good looking dude. But when he was in office, like he was, he was getting it in. So it's like, it's, it's tough, man. You still extremely are... on the record. Yeah. He was, he's the one yeah. we know for sure. For sure. <laughs> <clears throat> for sure. Like, like, it, I, like, they made a whole HBO series about how on the record that is. That, like, I mean, I, Nixon, which, Nixon which might I felt have been bad. too evil to be I too. Feel... <laughs> oh, Nixon. <laughs> nah. Oh, actually, Nixon gotta... never. I was reading his book, Nixon. Like, I didn't admit to it there. No, he just—he <laughs> was such an alcoholic. He was such an alcoholic. He couldn't do anything. Couldn't get bro, up. that's that's even more of a reason, bro. <laughs> no, 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 like no, he just didn't have the physical abilities. Yeah, he didn't have the physical uh, abilities. Actually, well, he was just—he was just going down on him. Then there's no way. And I was listening to a podcast. He no, he would just get raging drunk and try to nuke China, and then people would be like, "No, dude, you drank too much. No, try to nuke China." Sleep it off. <laughs> it was the Friday best back in the morning. We can talk about it. Back when Clinton That's was right. running for office, uh, and I think even while he was president, him and Al Gore used to go out for jogs, but they would just jog to the closest fast food place. They would run <laughs> to a fast food restaurant and then eat a shitload of fast food and walk back, like wearing all their gear. That's and the but dream. You want to see? You want to see some ridiculous shorts? Google Al Gore jogging shorts. Oh yeah. And oh man. Good luck. Clinton Good luck is with the someone Iverson. I wish. Like this, was, this was like pre-Iverson. So what did you expect Al Gore to be rocking? Yeah. It was pretty bad. Al Gore basketball shorts? Yeah. Clinton had some tiny shorts, too, when they go running. Oh, he, oh, he got the Euro Jones song. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, he got the Euro Jones song. Wasn't that a song. thing, got, though, in like that era that have, like short shorts like that? Yeah. You know what I don't understand about this shit, bro? This is what I never understood Ew, about like, this shit. This, like, those are shorter than what I wear. It's the it's the chafing. Like, don't your thighs be running up against each other? That's the, it would chafe. The, I don't never understood that. Yeah, not everyone has like NFL running back thighs. Okay, right. touche. 
the, the so, first... so you're telling you you saying their legs don't touch when they run. Some people, mine do because I've been fat my whole life. But yeah, other people <laughs> the, they don't. The I first picture that, makes that pops up is them in covered in sweat. It's him. It's Al Gore and Bill Clinton with McDonald's cups. Yeah, that's what they would do. <laughs> Jeez. They would just run to a, run to the closest fast food place and load up. Do you remember when when Barack was president and he introduced Kamala Harris? I think he was out in California giving some speech, and he was like, and a lot of people are saying this is the finest attorney general in the United States. And Michelle was like, what the fuck, Barack? Like, <laughs> you knew he was dipping into something. I don't know if, if those two ever – but that's not something that, like, a, a faithful man just, like, breaks out on stage. That's not a line that you have ready to go. I'm telling you, man, Billy O is getting it in. I know I'm probably going to get some hate, some backlash for that, but I just I can't see it, man. I can't, I can't see none of these cats, even the ones that couldn't get it up. Like, you're doing some kind of freaky fetish shit that you've always been into. There's something. You just have too much. It's just I don't believe it. Billy? I don't, but I, I don't know. We're shattering Billy's illusions. All our heroes have flaws, guys. It's no, what was... I'm just thinking about how Jeff Bezos, like, he he started, like, cheating, and, you know, he just ended up with, like, he was cheating on his wife with someone who wasn't even, like... What? Like, you're the richest... Wasn't what, Billy? Wasn't what? Richest, you're ri the richest man in the world, and, like, this this is what... Sets you off the rails. Like, so, I feel like so Billy, I, I so Billy you think it's... someone's sexual preference should be uh, directly correlated with their physical attributes, like their their looks, their classical beauty looks? No, no. What I'm saying is that I feel like this when everyone says like, like you know, JFK was getting Marilyn Monroe, and you can sort of understand that. But I feel like the circles are so small at that you know height of power that there's only certain people you can get away with cheating with. I I also don't think that Jeff Bezos' girlfriend is like ugly. I'm not. She's pretty attractive. That. I'm not saying that. I just you, thought. You you think that's the only one he was cheating on her with? I I don't think I don't know. I'm just my as guy. My guy. My guy. Had, my Look, guy. My I'm, guy had I'm, a bunch I'm, of properties, a bunch of different places. He was getting it in, Billy. I'm telling you. Also, that. shout out to the new boyfriend of Mackenzie Bezos. He's a school teacher, I think. Mm -hmm. Good for that guy. Hey. Absolute legend. Living. The oh dream. oh he. Oh, you talking about buddy who's dating the ex, his ex-wife? Yeah. yeah. Damn, she got like what, twenty bill or something like that? Yeah, pretty good, pretty More good catch. That. Yeah, at least. I think it she... was sixty or seventy. It yeah, didn't she immediately become the richest woman on the planet? I like believe ever? So, yeah. Yep. I am good. adamantly against that bullshit. Uh, her net worth is sixty-two billion dollars. For what? Fuck out of here. Right place, right time. I'm, a, a, I'm I'm vehemently against that bullshit. He's a high school science teacher, and he's not now, anymore. He's now married to me, <laughs> Mackenzie Bezos. They're married. I would take her last name if I were him. I'd be well, like, well, why wouldn't you? Yeah. I'm a Bezos. And I guess she's Mackenzie Scott. So the guy's name is Dan Jewett. If I was Dan, I'd be like, yeah, my name's Dan Scott now. That's that's yeah, me. So fast. The first line of that's, her Wikipedia list her is an American novelist and philanthropist. Mm-hmm. Sure. She's while a best selling author. Well, both not technically untrue. No, she's a best selling author. She was on the New York Times list. It's, it's, it's not oh, first line. Probably, it helps if maybe your husband owns the largest bookseller in the history of the world to get on. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a couple buttons he can press in the algorithm to get you in the uh, like shoppers also bought list I'm at the bottom of the shit. page. <laughs> All right, so here's how we're going to do it this week because it is Thanksgiving, the best holiday of the entire year. And so to celebrate Thanksgiving, we're going to give you a special episode of Nano Dosing. Every other podcast out there, they said, you know what? We're not putting anything out on Thursday or Friday this week. Guess what? We are. We're giving you something. Name, name another holiday that we've ever done that for. Never. That ipso facto Thanksgiving is the best holiday there is because you get a new Nano Dosing. Pretty sure we did July 4th. Nope. The only one. So, uh, yeah. Li tune in. On Thursday, also be sure to check out the Black Friday offers that we have available. We've got brand new sweatshirts. The Billy Frog sweatshirt is dropping. The, the Billy NFT sweatshirt is I, finally here. I actually think that this is going to be our best-selling item. I love it. It's I, awesome. I love the Billy Frog sweatshirt. It's well, there's sick. the Billy Frog sweatshirt, and then there's the NFT shirt. Wait, so are we? Did we put the the basic ass frog on the sweatshirt? We have two different frog sweatshirts. We okay. want to cover all of our bases. Billy just hates one of the frogs because it reminds him too much of a school textbook. Right. 
It's actually fine if you're not in my brain, but I think that it's my aw- frog will sick. outsell the other frog. I I'm think, just saying. I agree. I think that your frog... If you keep sabotaging that one shirt, yeah, it definitely I'm, will. I'm just saying, I think that my frog is far superior to the textbook frog and will outsell. Well, yeah. vote with your pocketbooks, people. Let us know which sweatshirt design you like the best. We've got two frog sweatshirts coming out, and then we've got uh, all sorts of macrodosing, just t-shirts... Think some other hoodies. The whole Barstool store is twenty percent off from Black Friday to Cyber Monday, so it's all of our sh- it's all of our stuff, not just the stuff that comes out on Black Friday. Okay, so check it out: twenty percent off everything in the store. Mm-hmm. It's the best time to buy it. Take care of your Christmas shopping ahead of time. Um, check it out: mid- midnight Thursday night, Friday morning. That's when it's going to start. Yep. So, and buy Billy's frog sweatshirt. It is a good frog. They'll go quick. I'm sure they so. will. I, I bet you it's going to sell out. Yeah. They're and not I mean, prepared. I, I'm excited to get one. Yeah. So check it out. And uh, we will see you guys in that nano dosing that's coming out Thursday night. It's going to be voicemails only voicemails only So check it out and possibly some NFT talk. Love you guys. Oh. Oh.